good be good enough for the first down. Well, I'll tell you, again, it's the University of Missouri coming out in a different formation with the shotgun that time, and Jones gets the snap, does a good job of fielding it, and just unleashes it. And that's a good, safe play to begin this drive with, and that's a great reaction that time by Corby Jones. What we see there, too, is Missouri. They go into their huddle close to the line of scrimmage, and they get up to the line of scrimmage quickly. First and 10, balls out to 32 for the Tigers. The fullback, big number 34, Ron James. They call him Rhino for good reason. 276 pounds. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go through this season and see a bigger fullback than that guy. And he's got a great story behind him because so much of what they do from a blocking team standpoint in the running game is based on his ability. He is an outstanding athlete that these coaches at Missouri really like. Hardy, how would you like 525 pounds of fullback between he and Blackwell? Not too bad. I wouldn't. <laughs> I do want to coach against him. On second and nine. Jones, a little play action. Straight back, has some pressure. Looking for somebody, tucks it in. Gets up maybe to the line of scrimmage before Jason Thorin puts him out of bounds. Let's check in with Jim Knox down the sideline. Jim? Hey, Ron, keep your eye on the footing of this field. It could be a factor early because it rained most of the night in Lawrence. I'll tell you what Missouri's going to do. They're going to start off in an Astro turf too. It's a slick bottom, and it grips really well, but it's short cleats. Meanwhile, the equipment manager, Bob Stanley from 20 years, told me if they begin to slip and slide, they'll move to a destroyer. This is a lane to longer cleats, so keep your eye on the footing early. Well, they'll need some footing now, facing third and eight. For the second time, they have faced third and long yardage. Three wide receivers in the game, two to the left, one to the right. And Corbin Jones is going to call a timeout. Showing a little bit of leadership, not taking any chances. 12-11 left to play in quarter number one. We have no score with Missouri and Kansas. yards rushing and two touchdowns. Meantime, halfback Rock Olivo was all over the field, picking up three touchdowns and tallying 166 yards on the ground. Jones and Olivo combined for 459 of Missouri's 542 yards of total offense and will always be remembered in Columbia for their stellar performances that day. The 42-25 season-ending victory gave Larry Smith Tigers a 5-6 and six record, their best in 10 years. And for the second time in three games for Missouri, they are once again playing the Kansas Jayhawks. On third and eight, is this a blitz situation for Kansas? Well, yeah, normally it would be, but Kansas in the last two games has only switched two times. So I would say no, they're going to play zone and maybe bluff a blitz. From the shotgun, two wide receivers right. Jones has some time. Steps up in the pocket. Short drop. Pass complete. Jumps immediately for a gain of one. Olivo on the catch. He was the team's second leading receiver last year. But he was upended on that play just after a pickup of about two. Kansas sat in the zone and wants to make Corby Jones throw the ball close to beat him. And again, they got to throw the ball down the field a little bit more to get those first downs. And there are the numbers on Jason Smith. Two punts, 32.5 average. We may see two different punters today for Missouri. Once again, another flag is thrown. And we'll have another stoppage of play already. Missouri, a couple of penalties. This may be their third. Dead ball, ball start, on the offense. Five yards penalty, still fourth down. Ron, I still think it's a case of the jitters. I think they're a little bit too wound up in this game. And as soon as they get into the flow of the game, they'll relax a little bit. And, you know, speaking of the punter, Larry Smith, I think, is the only head football coach in the United States that personally coaches the punters and the kickers. I think he likes to get out of practice early. Well, that's what he was saying <laughs> yesterday. But we asked him that, and he said because he loves doing it, and proudly he said, I was a punter in college. Now we'll try it again with Jason Smith. Gets it away. It's a low kick. Tony Blevins will take it right at the 35. Dancing around. Not going to get away from the white jerseys. He's going to be stacked up at about the 38-yard line. Count that as about a 32-yard punt. We'll give him three on the return. 
As the Kansas Jayhawks will come into the game on the offensive side of the football for the first time, and they are led by the senior, Matt Gunner. Last week, pulled himself from the game against TCU because he said he was dizzy, wasn't feeling well. But Johnner and Zach Wagner will both be active today. Yeah, and Johnner's the oldest guy in the team, and he also told us he's the boldest guy on the team. <laughs> I have to if he had here when he started here. And here is Johnner, one lone setback. That is Eric Van as Michael Chandler goes in motion. Van bounces out to the outside, stutter step, picks up five before being tripped up by Harold Piercy. The free safety out of Kansas City, Kansas. Now the offensive line for Kansas, Justin Glasgow. He is the best player on the line. He's also the biggest. 6'6", 315 pounds. Look for Kansas to try to run over the back of him because the offensive line is something I think that even Terry Allen's not sure about. Last year, the offensive line was in the coaches last year. It was pathetic. This year, Terry Allen wants to, see, wants to call a timeout, too. And they don't see him. This year, he says his line's improving, but it's not where he wants it to be. Van again, able to pick up one on the play. And Eric Van is the man you want to watch in that backfield, although they too will shuttle in backs, including number 40, David Winbush. But Van has not played well the last couple of games, but the coaches think that this could be his breakout game. You know, he left the game last week with a sore, sore shoulder, and it'll be interesting to see if that holds up today. But they got a little guy waiting in the wing in case he can't play. Uh, third down and four, five minutes gone by here in the first quarter. From the shotgun, the southpaw Johnner has a rush, has to step up in the pocket. Is going to be short of the first down. Depending on where the official put it, but Artie, I think that was the case. I don't think he was sure where the line was. He went into his slide about a half a yard too short. You're absolutely correct. And one of the things that's going to be tough for Kansas today is the Missouri defense plays a lot of man. Now you're going to see Connor here look down the field and take off. But obviously there was an assignment error there because a blitzing outside backer came completely clean. He did a good job of turning a negative into a positive. Well, on fourth down, the Jayhawks are going to go for it. Johnner is going to keep it, holds his way up over the 50-yard line, down to about the 49 and a half, and it still will be close. You know, from my eagle eye up here, Ron, I think it's a first down. I think you're right. But, you know, this is what you got to do in big games like this. Take chances once in a while. Well, Terry Allen's third down conversion percentage is not good. And he is concerned about that, so why not go on fourth down? And he should be concerned because coming into this game, they were one out of 19 on third and four plus so far this year, which is absolutely horrendous. Now the Jayhawks have new life. First and ten, nine minutes to play here in quarter number one. Ball's on a 49-yard line. Brian Gray in motion. John is going to put it up in the air again. He's going deep. Man wide open. It is Gray. He's got some room to run. <laughs> 45 yards on the reception. John to Brian Gray. He practiced the other day. The Kansas offense spent a lot of time working on sending Gray in motion because they felt Missouri would get confused in the secondary, which is exactly what happens there when they move Brian Gray around. That's a nice throw and obviously a nice catch. Barry Allen was known for an explosive offense at Northern Iowa. He's showing it there. Up through the middle, down to the two-yard line, and his van again. Calder off Easter coming up from his strong safety spot to make the stop. Going back to Brian Gray, he's from Liberty, Missouri, one of 13 Missouri players on this Kansas roster. He actually turned down a scholarship from Missouri, and he does not like these guys. He says, I want to beat them because he takes so much grief during the offseason when they lose. And he was a quarterback out of high school, and they have named a new position for him. They call him the A-back. Not the H-back, not the tight end, the A-back. Well, let's hope he grades A this afternoon. Second and two, ball is on the two. Got it. Up the middle, straight over the top, did not get it, down to about the one-foot line, is Van again. 
Good looking stop by Kevin Ford right in the middle of that linebacker stop. The senior out of Denison, Texas, was an outside linebacker on the spring. Moved him up to the middle. How about the key for the Jayhawks today, Artie? Well, they've got to control the run of Missouri. In other words, they can't let Missouri run for 400 yards. They've got to make big plays, which they just made one of them, and they've got to force Jones to throw. They can't let Jones beat them running the football. Third and goal, two tight ends, bowling their way up over the middle. Touchdown, Kansas! I think Mark, Matt Johnner did the job uh, he needed to do. They wanted to make big plays. They said their team in 95 made big plays. The team last year did not. And he ends up getting the CD. Here you're going to see the right tackle, Justin Glasgow, number 76, just move the pile. And I'll tell you, Terry Allen, that's a good call down there. You want to be safe, and you want to come out of this situation with the touchdown. The step is down. The kick is blocked, and it's caught in the air. And he can run it, but it's not going to go anywhere. I think it was Donnell Jones, number 97, the senior out of St. Louis, Missouri. He's already blocked a couple of points after touchdown. He gets another one, and it's 6 nothing. Kansas on top. That's the 15th kick that's been blocked in the Larry Smith era here and the ninth PAT. They know how to teach these kids how to block punts and kicks. Well, Donnell Jones, you mentioned, had a couple. Those came last year, so he's got his first of this year. And if this is going to be a close game, the proverbial, that may be the difference in the end. You know, we were talking to Mo Anke, the defensive coordinator, and he said Donnell Jones is a guy who looks bad, but he plays good. I thought that was pretty funny because that's a good play by that kid. Now Garcia already nine touchbacks this year, kicking with the win, and it is going to be number 10. Well, our Mazda scoring drive for the Kansas Jayhawks. They did it. It was impressive, and they did it through the air and a little bit on the ground. Jotter, the one-yard run, but really was set up by that 45-yard pass. Jotter to Brian Gray. And, you know, big play and confusion in the Missouri secondary. That is what's going to determine how much the Kansas offense can move this football. And you know what, Terry Allen was telling us early on in the season, he's had to allow the defense to win the game for him. He said, because our offense isn't ready, but now the offense stepped up first. But he also said they haven't done a lot of things that they're going to do in those first two games. And I think we're going to see some here today. Well, Weston Blackwell in the backfield now for the Missouri Tigers. Once again, six running backs will see action today. And it is going to be Devin West, a junior out of Mobile, Missouri. He said he's playing football as a way to go to medical school. Maurice Gaddy on the stop. Now let's talk about Missouri and what they have to do to win today's football game. Well, Missouri doesn't try to disguise what they want to do. But they have got to run the football successfully all day. That's number one. And number two, they cannot afford to turn the ball over. Because when you're a ball control offense, you can't give the opponent opportunities. Well, last week, Kansas beat East to Michigan 44-24. Game number two for them. Kansas almost offside. No penalty flag. Not a very good fit. Jump for a loss is going to be wet. Steve Bratton coming up on that linebacker spot. The junior out of Colorado. Option football is a big part of this Missouri running game. And if you force the quarterback like Kansas did that time to make a quick decision, it allows the rest of the defenders to rally around the pit. And Kansas is going to come off the corner today and try to hit Corby Jones before he gets going. Larry Smith believes in power football, but he also wants to sprinkle in some option football, which I think is a great idea because you're forced to not to play man-to-man -man against you. Well, for the third time this afternoon already, Missouri facing third and long yardage. This is third and 14. They're coming after Jones. He's going to be able to scramble and one blocker in front of him, but going to be dumped at about the 26-yard line. Patrick Brown coming up to make the stop number 47, the junior from Westerville, Ohio. That was a big play for the Kansas defense. They are making Jones throw the ball to beat him. Now, you see a blitz coming, which is uncharacteristic of Kansas, but Jones does an outstanding job of scrambling, but he just can't get far enough down the field for the first down. So far, the Kansas defense is doing exactly what they wanted to do. Jason Smith set the putt. First one was about 32 yards. This one, another low-line wobbly kick. Blevins at the 35. Wall setting up on the right side. Can he get around? 
I don't think he's going to be able to change his direction. That was a return of about minus 10. 39-yard punt, minus 10 on the return, but Kansas has the lead. We'll return to Memorial Stadium after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. They're going to keep it on the ground with Eric Van, and he just uses some power to pick up about four on the play. Let's take a look at the Missouri defense on the line. Look for Justin Wyatt, who led the team in sacks back in 1996, number 90, the junior from Herman, Missouri. What about confidence, Artie, for that opening drive of Kansas? Their offense has been a little shaky this year. Although they put some points on the board, that had to be a big confidence builder. Huge. Absolutely huge. Two wide receivers right, one to the left, one in motion. Chandler in motion. Goddard hands it off. There is some daylight again for Van. Crosses the 40. Up to the 50. Can he stay in bounds? The stiff arm at the 25 finally knocked out of bounds by Calderon off Easter, but not before a pickup of 46. One of the things the Kansas coaches felt they can do was outman the Missouri defense at the point of attack by motioning tight ends and wide receivers across. Now here you're going to see a simple handoff to Eric Van, and he does a good job of getting up the field and avoiding a tackle, but that hole is wide open. Ron Fulwin, you're going to run through there. <laughs> and one of the reasons is, and we'll go back and show you, the Kansas scheme is outmanning the Missouri defense at the point of attack with too many blockers. Well, Van already with 61 yards. He told you at the top of the show that the coach himself, this could be his breakout game. David Winbush, his first carry of the afternoon, the freshman out of Colleen, Texas, that they are extremely high on. We'll talk more about him throughout this afternoon. And for Missouri, the linebackers, Kevin Ford. He calls the signals and the run stopper, and in the secondary, it is Chad Chris, one of the fastest defensive backs in the country. Number five, suspended for the final three games last year, back this season. You know, Missouri's defense lines up according to field and according to tight end. It's very confusing sometimes, not only for the offense, but their own defensive players. On second and seven. Jotter will keep it on the ground. Bam. Makes his way across the 15 down to the 13 yard line. Eric Van is showing us something that he did not show in those first two games. A little explosiveness. He's had the shoulder and the back problems. But this is the Eric Van that we saw last year return a kick for 100 yards against Oklahoma. Well, he's one of the most versatile players in the Big 12. He does it all. He, he leads the Big 12 right now in kickoff returns with a 25-yard average. He's even a center fielder on the baseball team. So this guy is a good athlete. And I just think he was banged up a little bit last week, Ron. Gully and McDermott at the tight end spot. Van is going to be dropped at the 15, a loss of two on the play. So on third and one, Marquise Gibbs Gibson, the junior out of Florida, comes up from that defensive end, stop to make the stop. And he's the kind of player Larry Smith wants to recruit to the University of Missouri. He's fast, he's a little small, but out of junior college, he had 27 career sacks. He can flat motor up the field. Now Kansas is going to have to settle for a field goal. They spot it at the 22. It'll be a 32-yard field goal for Joe Garcia. There you see the numbers on him. The holder is Hamilton Hill. The kick is up. Lifts the upright, and it is good. Joe Garcia from 32 yards puts the upright. There was 2.30 left in quarter number one. Kansas has a surprisingly 9-0 lead on Missouri. Yeah, and it's 2 nothing lead on Missouri. Yeah, and it's two drives and it's nine points. So the game plan is working right now for the University of Kansas. And quite frankly, the Missouri defense looks slow to me. Kansas is really coming off the football and taking it to the front of Missouri. Well, Terry Allen in his first year out of Northern Iowa told us yesterday that in order to beat this team, they have to make those big plays. That's the game on both sides of the ball, I think. Uh, when you face the option attack, we've got to stay away from not letting him get the pitch or get the quarterback for the 30-yard gain or even in the fullback uh, to score a touchdown. Offensively, with the nature of the defense we face from Missouri, we've got to produce some big plays. It's going to be a big play game, 
tomorrow to decide the outcome. You know, I, I asked Terry Allen why he coaches the quarterback. He says, because that's what I do best. Here's Suzanne getting up the field and a huge hole, but he gets an outstanding block down the field by Michael Chandler, number 86. Wide receivers blocking downfield is essential to a good running game. Well, Van picked up officially 47 yards on that carry. And it is because of his legs that the Kansas City Hawks lead 9 up. I also asked Terry Allen why he calls the play. He says, because that's what I do the best. And he does. Well, Joe Garcia, 3-for-3 three three this afternoon. That is 11 out of 12 in the end zone this season. You know, the best way to have great kickoff coverage is don't let him return. <laughs> it in the end and zone. so far, he's doing that. And he's got a little wind in his back, but still, that's outstanding. Well, I think Larry Smith even admitted to us yesterday that he felt that as far as the kicking game goes, the edge would have to go to Kansas. And it does, because not only on paper, but returning players in the skill position. Well, Missouri will begin play on their own 20 with 224. Alito and James in the backfield behind Corby Jones. We haven't seen that explosiveness yet from Jones or Olivo as far as running the football. Running behind a very solid, solid offensive line. Getting Lehman in motion. Jones on the keeper, hangs on to it. There's some explosiveness. He goes up about 11 on the pickup. Well, that was an option on the corner, and Jones saw someone come up the field and take the pitch man, and he just tucked the ball and hit the seam up around the tackle. A good option quarterback will tuck the ball and go up the field. He reminds me of a couple of those guys who used to play at Oklahoma. You're going to see him here, look outside, but the pitch man is taken. He just tucks the ball, he makes the decision early, and gets up the field. Now, with that run, Corby Jones becomes Missouri's all-time leading rusher for quarterback. First and 10, ball on the 32 for the Tigers, trailing 9-0. Jones steps up in the pocket, and he is going to be dropped at the 45, but not before picking up three yards. Patrick Brown on the stop. Jerry Burnt, the offensive coordinator from Missouri, said to us yesterday, we have to throw the ball on first and 10 to keep Kansas's defense off balance. So far, they've done it three times today, and all have either been scrambles or incomplete passes. I think they got to settle down and go back and do what they do. And that's line up and pound people and run the football. Well, they said on a 70-play game, if they snap it 70 times, they wouldn't mind 20 to 25 passes any more than that. Missouri felt they'd be in trouble. Closing in on one minute left here in the quarter. Everybody's jumping off sides. I'm not sure who moved first. It may be on Missouri. Todd Niemeyer from that right tackle spot may have jumped just a little bit on that play. Dead ball. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start. Yeah, okay. Hal Dowden, the uh, referee, it may be Corby Jones that may have pulled away from the center too early. Yeah, it looked like he pulled, pulled back a little too soon in an attempt to pull the defense offside. He did. And I think he did. And that's a good call by the official. That's the fourth procedure penalty already on, on Missouri. And I think Larry Smith, uh, this is only his second game, but those metal mistakes. He's got a common football team down. Penalties cannot lose the game for you today. Inside of a minute, you can see four penalties, 20 yards already for the Tigers. Facing second and 12, balls out of 30. Right up the middle, Bronco Levo, and he's able to get the first down and one to spare. And that, now that's the bread and butter Larry Smith and the University of Missouri Tigers want to execute. This guy is one of the throwback tough guys in all of college football. And here he is, just a simple handoff on a blast play and goes up the field. Now, for me, he's running a little bit too straight up because it reminds me of his hero, Forrest Gump, which we'll talk about. <laughs> he's got to get his pads down a little bit more and he could have got about five or six more yards. Well, you can see Brock Olivo is facing Darrell Wallace and he has a chance of breaking that mark this afternoon to become Missouri's all-time leading rusher. Of all the athletes that I've been able to shake hands in almost 25 years of doing this, he broke my hand last night, Artie. That Brock Olivo's got a handshake and a half. Missouri's going to call a timeout with 24 seconds. You know, Brock Olivo is quite the legend. He sets the standards. Larry Smith said, I have never, nor will I ever, have a player like him again. He is one of the most dedicated players on this Tiger team. 
But you know, even though he's not too far off that rushing record, it doesn't mean a whole lot to number 27. I've had a lot more opportunities than most of those guys have had to get the record. I've been uh, I've been with a great team as far as uh, we're we're ru we're running oriented team. We have a great offensive line. We have probably probably the best two fullbacks in the nation um, at what they do. Uh, so I mean I'm just I'm in a uh, I'm in a I'm in really a, a no lose situation just as far as I'm in you know as far as getting that record. So I mean I've gotten every opportunity. So it's really not that big of a deal. Cole, Larry Smith, Brock has never had a bad day in a game or a practice. He reminds me of Tom Lappin, who used to play at Nebraska and then the 49ers, and Moose Johnson now with the Cowboys. He is a tough guy and a real throwback. And his longest yard in his career run is 33 yards. So that means the yardage he has gotten has been one that he's gotten hit a lot on, and that's up 10, 15 yards. That first down, Jones in the air, complete to Kent Layman. He gets into Kansas territory before Michael Allen comes up from that strong safety spot, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, another one that turned out a scholarship from Mizzou. And right now, Missouri's being very stubborn about mixing it up and trying to throw the ball a little bit on first down. And another first down. They move the chains as we close inside of 10 seconds left here in quarter number one. Let's see if Jones just lets the clock run down. That's the time remaining in the quarter, lower right-hand portion of your screen. And they're not going to get it off. Penalties have been a problem for Missouri in the first 15 minutes. Big plays have been an advantage for Kansas. And as we head to quarter number two, the Jayhawks lead the Tigers by nothing. Six-yard line, along with Artie Gigantino and Jim Knox, I'm Rob Thuman, welcoming you back to Lawrence, Kansas. From the cloudy skies, but it's a good day for football. Ken Lehman in motion. Jones on the keeper, has the pitch, man, but he's going to tuck it, keep it, and get dropped at the 45 after a pickup of one. Jason Harris coming up from that quarterback stop, a senior out of Fort Worth, Texas, makes the stop. That was good pursuit that time, inside out, by the Kansas defense. To stop an option football team, the entire defense has got to do exactly what they're supposed to do and then swarm the quarterback or swarm the pitch man, whoever has the ball. And by swarm, Ron, we mean chase after the football, full speed. Well, one thing that Terry Allen was telling us is that they need help from the secondary on run support, and they have gotten it so far this afternoon. Ross and Lehman, the wide receiver. Jones puts it up, wide open, pass is complete to Lehman. Gets the first down as he goes down to the Kansas 30-yard line. Jamie Harris was on the coverage. The junior out of Olathe, Kansas. Corby Jones worked very hard this summer at reading coverages. And that's exactly what he's doing here. He's reading the coverage of Kansas, and he picks his receiver and throws the perfect pass. Credit that to study in the off-season and during the film room during the week. Pick up a 15. Jones is a lot leaner looking this year. But he's really kind of just slimmed up his body. Worked on his mechanics in the offseason as they give it off to the fullback. First man through, Ernest Blackwell. The senior out of St. Louis at 235 pounds. But being a complete quarterback is very important to Corby Jones and also for the success of Missouri. I feel like I must have the ability physically to go out there and do something or else I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have made it here. But what I worked on this summer was actually understanding and knowing the passing game and understanding and knowing my receivers and their speeds and their strengths, who can go deep, who's going to be a possession guy, and, uh, and that kind of deal. And that's what, that's what I think is, uh, has improved our passing game. Well, Jones is four for four throwing the football this afternoon, handing it off to Olivo straight up the middle, just barreling his way down to the 15-yard line. That is vintage Brock Olivo, is it not, Artie? It is, and it's vintage Missouri offense running the football. What they want to do here, they're going to take the right guard, he's going to come around, they're going to lead up with the fullback. That's an old-fashioned power play. And frankly, Ron, there's too many blockers in the hole. And that's what Missouri's going to try to do all day, is get more blockers in the hole where they're running. Pick up a 13 out of the play for Olivo. 
from the I formation. First and ten, ball out of 15. Alivo again, the big hole. Saw the goal first, and he stopped at about the six-yard line after a pickup of about eight. Olivo is one tough kid. You know, the coach is telling us, and Brock is saying, because, you know, I like being in the weight room. Ever since I was a little boy, I wanted to be a Missouri Tiger. A lot of players say that to us, Artie, but I think, Brock Olivo, you believe it. This kid is an all-American young man. He absolutely is, and I tell you, his body can really take the punishment of defenders, like you said before, trying to tackle him. Second and two, ball is on the seventh for the Tigers, their best drive of the afternoon. The fullback, Ron James, 276 pounds. He gets it going forward. Tough to bring down. He's got the first. He is. And I tell you, that guy is nicknamed Rhino. And he should be Rhino. In fact, he is such a devastating blocker. The coaches are starting to give out a Rhino Blocker Award <laughs> for the guy on offense who blocks the best in the game. And what they do, they put a picture of a rhinoceros in that guy's locker on Monday and it's there all week. He got the first one, obviously, last week. So let's see who gets the Rhino Award today. Two pullbacks. Blackwell and James both in the backfield. The handoff to Olivo inside the five, down to the three. J.J. Johnson coming up on the inside linebacker spot out of Los Angeles, California. This is old-fashioned football with three bats in the backfield and two tight ends. Now you're going to see the center, Robert Reedy, just blow off the ball and try to move the pile. There is nothing complicated about this style of offense. In fact, it's Larry Smith's high school offense, the old single wing, which had a great influence on his ability to coach the running game, he says. Again, two fullbacks, Alito behind him. Second and goal from the two. Jones keeps it, drops it to one. Sets up a third down situation, and again, it is J.J. Johnson. Time for Jay Jr. Jay Jr., and that was a good play by him. He did a nice job of coming up the field and making the play. This is also an advantage defensively when the team lines up this tight with three backs in the backfield because they're not stretching the defense. They're all within, all 11 players within the two tight ends. Third and goal, ball is on the one. Olivo over the top, touchdown Missouri. Olivo's third touchdown rush of the football this year. And guess who was the lead blocker? Our man, the Rhino. That's right who is probably Brock Olivo's closest friend. You know, I can't believe this guy is 276 pounds. In fact, they ought to change the name from fullback to him. Ron James should not be referred to as a fullback anymore. He ought to be called a gib, a G-I-B, a guard in the backfield, Ron. He's big enough. Got Nick Mitt on for the extra point. And he is perfect six for six this year. We have 10.51 left in the first half. Missouri on the board, but they still trail. It was obvious on that last drive that Missouri has calmed down now, kind of not committing penalties, going back and doing what they do best, and that's run the football. And they also control the line of scrimmage. Best kicking with the win, another touchback, and Kansas will begin first and ten from their own 20. Taking a look at our Mazda scoring drive for the Tigers. It ended up with Brock Olivo on the one-yard run. 80 yards, 13 plays, and that was vintage Missouri football. Now you're going to see the Rhino man in the backfield come up in here and just blast the linebacker, which allows Brock Olivo to jump over the top. Olivo is a good athlete that really worked on his body to help his vertical jump and helped him get over the pile there. Olivo five carries 37 yards so far this afternoon. John is still a quarterback. Eric Van is going to be stopped at about the 20. Let's take a look at some of the scores from around the country this afternoon. We'll keep you posted throughout. Today, North Carolina State leading Clemson. Boy, are they hot. They might be the most improved team in the country right now. Uh, the Buffs are in Ann Arbor, and they trail by a touchdown. That game is in the second. West Virginia on top of BC by a touchdown also in quarter number two. Auburn and Mississippi tied at three. That is early on. And the Nittany Lions, a big favorite over Temple. Right now, Temple leads it. I can't believe that score, Ron. How can that be? No. I bet you it's not that in about an hour and a half. 
probably going to be right. <laughs> Big time. Brian Gray in motion. Got a little play action pass. Roll it out. He's got some room to run. Let's it fly. Man's wide open. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass is complete to Michael Chandler, the sophomore from Kansas City, who is this team's best receiver. But we had a lot of flags being thrown in the secondary. 34-yard pickup if the play stands. Well, the officials are huddling, and I saw a couple of flags, so there might be two infractions on this run, but that was a bootleg, and that's something that John Hunter does extremely well, and it's something that is a trademark this year in the University of Kansas offense. Well, Terry Allen telling us a couple of weeks ago that the big pressure as far as his offense goes is on the quarterback because they like a, a lot of play action. They like to keep him moving. You know, let me ask you something. Though. What offense doesn't put pressure well, on the quarterback? You can't win in the National Football League or college football without a good quarterback, period. Well, that guy right there, Terry Allen, was a pretty good quarterback in his day at Northern Iowa. Well, it goes against Missouri. Watch the left of your street. I think it may have been one of the safeties for Missouri. Randy Potter, a cornerback, actually, watch. The left of your street right there. He, he, he stumbles, and what he does as he begins to stumble, he reaches up and grabs for Chandler. And that's a good call by the official. But, you know, it's a smart play by Potter rather than get beat for a touchdown. Nice to play. First down. Rather than compete for a touchdown, grab the guy and get yeah. the penalty. Well, actually, it also looked like Chad Chris also was grabbing onto somebody from Missouri. They had two choices there. That's probably why we saw two different flag throws. It'll be first and ten. Ball on the 46 for Kansas on the Tigers' 46. Gray in motion. Johnner will hand it off to Van. Flips the defense over the 40, down to the 38-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play. He has that ability sometimes, already to show that hip, kind of like David Windish, as we hope we'll be able to see today. Gives you that hip, pulls it back, boom, he hits the line of scrimmage. Yes, he does. Now, watch both guards here pull. They're going to pull on a little counter play. Guards in front of backs is where it's at in football today in the running game. There's a big old hole up in there, and Van does a nice job of putting his shoulders down and getting up the field. But give the credit to those two big guards, Jerome Park and Damian Hunt. 76 yards already for Eric Van on 10 carries. Kansas calls a timeout. They lead by two. We're in the second. They're so low, you have the freedom to go places. An overcast day. We're expecting sunny skies, but it is cool. Wind is blowing, and right now Kansas leads Missouri 9-7. We're in the second. Artie Gigantino, Jim Knox, Tom Rossula coming your way. Jotter on second and two. They hand it off. Van bounces to the outside. Turns the corner. Gets the first. Add two more to that. That was a big-time run that time by him because he got stuck at the line of scrimmage but had enough balance and athleticism to bounce outside and get positive yardage. Now we look at the play selection, you can see Missouri four passes. They're four for four. Kansas is two for two. Obviously, the slant is toward rushing, but when they have had the throw, both teams have been successful. Yeah, and they've been successful for big plays, which is what we talked about in the open. Behind an offensive line that features four walk-ons, Matt Jotter. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Changes the play at the line of scrimmage as Van takes a step up. Three-step drop into the flat. Pass is complete to Akili Roberson, a former quarterback out of Los Angeles, California. This is his first reception of the year. They think he could be a very good split in. They recruited him as a quarterback, but with Jonner and Wagner, Wagner back there, they said, we got to use this guy's talent. He went to the coach already and said, I want to play. Yeah, they had a bunch of injuries. I'll say, this guy comes from a great athletic area in Los Angeles. He went to Southwest LA Junior College and Locke High School. He was the Los Angeles City Player of the Year his senior year in high school. Kansas has a shortage of wide receivers this year, believe it or not. So Akili is filling a big gap for Terry Allen. Winwood, Danson and Branson his way down to about the 23-yard line. That'll be another first down for the Jayhawks. John Sundahl on the stop. You know, Winwood is a different style runner, but the blocking up front stays the same. Watch the center, Chris 
Inneking just cleared away. He does a nice job of coming off one block and getting on somebody else. And he does a good job of holding there, but nobody calls it. <laughs> Those offensive linemen, I'll tell you, they will hold anything. <laughs> he is a sophomore from right here in Lawrence, Kansas. He says, I really want to be this team center. Well, he is. He is. Gray and McGirt, by to the left. The hand off to Winbush, and he is going to be dropped for a loss of about four. Well, it looks like some miscommunication in the offensive line that time by Kansas because Donnell Jones came completely clean. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim? Ron, we are here with the guys who have the best seat in the house. Actually, these are injured Kansas Jayhawk players as well as red shirt freshmen. What the system called for in the Terry Allen era is this. Instead of suiting up and being on the sidelines around the bench, what they do is they are sitting in these chairs or they're standing in front of the chairs rooting the team on. They said, actually, it's not that bad. They don't want to go through warm-ups not playing the game. They just like to dress out and watch the game and root the team on. As John steps up in the pocket, tucks it in, heads to the sideline, is going to take a hit as he runs out. Carlos Bozzi giving him a make sure you're out of bounds hit. Akili Robertson made a block that allowed Matt Jotter to get a little bit of daylight. You know, that was supposed to be in a penalty. Missouri blitzed that time. Missouri blitzed Eastern Michigan last week 15 times out of 62 plays. They have changed the philosophy of defense at Missouri to a man-to-man -man cover and a lot of blitzing and stunning up front. This man, Larry Smith, used to be a conservative defensive coach, but he has changed with the 90s. And he is concerned about his linebackers and his overall defense today. And right now, they're facing Kansas, who has a third down and nine situation. Jotter from the shotgun. They're coming, a bunch of white jerseys, but we have a penalty flag thrown. A lot of movement that time by Kansas in terms of shifting. And I think one of the linemen moved prior to the snap. Dead ball. Ball start. Me out there. Ball start on Kansas. Well, Terry Allen's team has been plagued by penalties this year, and he knows they cannot have any mental mistakes. His margin of error in this game is very, very slim. He's had too many penalties. They've had 23 penalties in two games, and I tell you, you cannot win football games against good teams. And he talked about that, that and a couple of six fumbles and third down conversions, not very good. But those are key areas that usually determine the difference between winning and losing. That's their first penalty this afternoon. Now it's third and 14. And we've already talked about they are not a good third down team. Jonner steps up, and he is going to be dropped. Coming up from that quarterback spot is Randy Potter, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Kansas picked on this guy last year, whose dad, believe it or not, was an all-big eight safety for the Missouri Tigers. This time he makes the play. That was a bootleg to the field, but it was also the perfect call defensively because you're going to see Potter come right here off the corner into the bootleg. And he's an athlete, so what he does, he just runs around the guard, number 73, Damian Hunt. It's a mismatch in the open field when you have an elusive corner against a big old offensive guard. Well, Randy Potter makes the big plays. We have talked about big plays being the difference. Kansas wants to talk about it. 7.23 left in the half. This time the Aggies will not take occasions lightly. Join us next Saturday morning at 11.30 Central for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. But the business at hand, Kansas leading Missouri by two, facing fourth down and 24, and they're going to go for it. Jotter, straight drop back, steps up in the pocket, he's going to let it go for all the money, deep into the corner, and complete intended for Michael Chandler. Chandler looked like he turned just about a fraction of a second too late. You know, I agree with that philosophy there. Why not go for it? Because if you punch the ball and the ball is punted into the end zone, it comes back to the 20 anyway, This is only a 15-yard difference. Here you're going to see Gunner come back. He's looking where he's going to throw from the get-go. Does a nice job of avoiding. Throws the ball up there. But it looks like Chandler came out of his pattern too soon and looked the other way. That could have been a big one for Kansas again. A little bit too much air, though, Ron, underneath it by Matt Jonner. Well, Missouri now, first and ten, though, going up against the number one defense in the NCAA coming into today's game. Blackwell and West in the backfield eye formation. West. Well, makes his way up to the 40, pick up of about four before J.J. Johnson makes the stop. Larry Smith knows he has a very talented quarterback in Corby Jones, and the guy can beat you a number of different ways. 
He set a standard of, of uh, what I would call good old football uh, instincts. First of all, he just dearly loves the game. Number two, he leads by example. He's a person that will, uh, what you see today, I guarantee you three years ago, uh, physically he wasn't what he is today. He has made himself just unbelievable. Missouri's going to keep it on the ground, crossing the 40 down to about the, or up to the 41 yard line. 6.25 left in the first half. We've got a dandy going on here in Lawrence. Kansas came in about a two point saver, kind of surprised both of us. It certainly did, and say, Ron, on the field here, it's third and three. This is the toughest call in football by any coach offensively or defensively. In fact, against Eastern Michigan, Missouri was 8 out of 13 on third down to 62%, which is pretty good. Well, they'll go with the split backfield, black and wet. Third and three. Layman in motion. Reset drop. Jones tucks it. He's in trouble, and he is going to be dropped. Patrick Brown, his second sack of the year, the junior from Westerville, Ohio, who says he wants to be an actor. Right now, he acted like a pretty good linebacker to make that stop. You know, Corby Jones is saying that he was pulled down by his face mask, so we'll take a look there, but Kansas comes out of character, and they blitz Missouri. And I'll tell you, Corby Jones is absolutely right. Patrick Brown grabbed his face mask, and I'll tell you, he's telling the official because he knows it. And the punt is blocked. Larry Smith, James Punter, put Vince Febo in, but Michael Allen coming up, blocks the punt, and Kansas gets it right back. Talk about big plays. Huge plays when you block a punt, it not only gives you the ball, but it changes the momentum of the game from a psychological standpoint. I think it's one of the most exciting things in all of football when you see somebody block a punt. Now you're gonna see Allen here come up the field and do a good job right there of taking the ball off the punter's foot and not jumping in the air. That was clinic right there, Ron, on how to block a punt. He took that $10 bill right off Thibaut's toe. 5-10 left in the half. Kansas knocking on the door again. Eric Van on the outside has some room. Penalty flag is thrown, and that's probably going to be a holding penalty on Kansas. Yeah, it certainly is. And I tell you, Van did a nice job of starting up inside and then bouncing outside. That's a design play, but that one's coming back. Now, well, Greg Davis, number 32, the fullback. That's where the flag was thrown, right at his feet. On the offense, 10 yards down, uh, 10. Face yards down. You know, sometimes everybody blames the offensive line for holding all the time, but running backs are also guilty of it because they're blocking athletic guys like defensive ends or linebackers or DB. And you're going to see Davis here, right here, do a nice job of getting an angle, but wrapping him up. Is he a wrestler in high school, too? He's got enough of them on this team, don't they? That brings up first and 23. Van just holding out of the football as he crosses the 40. Justin Wyatt riding his back, brings him down. Wyatt was a defensive end, volunteered to go on the inside, the junior out of Herman, Missouri. He had seven tackles for losses last year, and he's a real big part of this speed emphasis on the Missouri defense. Do you think Missouri's defense is too predictable at times? I think they're very predictable. I think you know exactly where they're going to line up. And I'm, I'm surprised Kansas hasn't gotten more on them so far, to be quite, quite honest with you. Two wide outs to the right. Lone setback is Van. Gunner has a man open in the middle, goes into the flat, wide open again. Penalty flag is thrown. Taylor on the reception. Down to the 10-yard line, make it the nine. But a penalty flag was thrown right as Chandler made his cut. Pick up a 32. We'll see if it stands. You know, it was either defensive holding or a pick. I think Chandler may have pushed off. He was so wide open on the play. You know, when a team like Missouri plays man-to-man 90% -man of the time, there's a ton of penalties in the receiver and DB area either pass interference or pushing off. This the offense, 15 yards penalty, we face second down. Now, that is a pick play.
play where one receiver is going to come down inside and pick off a defender and then the other receiver is going to run past them that is illegal in football but it's great in basketball oh, it's great in basketball. Roll, that works, I think. but th that's one of the problems you have when you're playing man all the time i'll tell you another problem and the jury's going through this right now you don't pick off passes the jury only had nine interceptions last year Minus 28 yards in penalties this drive for Terry Allen and the Kansas Jayhawks. Second and 38. Ball's out of 45. Closing in on four minutes left here in the first half. Goddard gets a little bit of pressure, rolls away from it. The wobbly pass, not going to be caught by anybody. One thing that the Missouri Tigers wanted to really improve on this year was pressure from the outside. At times we've seen it, but in the crucial times, we haven't seen it from the Tigers. And that time they changed up. They're going to play zone defense that time with those two guys and five guys underneath. Kansas is expecting some kind of blitz and man. Missouri changes it up, confuses the quarterback, and plays zone. It would have been, I think, ill-advised to play man in a situation like that with third and forever as the down and distance. Well, that was third and forever at 38 yards to the other. Brother, uh, the main Colton in the lineup. They keep it on the ground. The van, and he is going to be stuck. Maybe a pickup of one. Harold Kersey, an explosive free safety on the stop. You know, that's the most frustrating thing in the world for a coach is when you start on a yard line and you go backwards. I mean, the name of this team is to go forward, but you never want to go backwards. That is very disappointing. Dean Royal set the punt his first kick of the afternoon. He's averaging just over 44 yards. He's a good one. And we'll see him at halftime. We did a little punting clinic with him yesterday, and he's done an outstanding job so far with a 44-yard average. Don't make him a star today. Me or him? <laughs> well, with that kick, that's a pretty good one. The high kick fielded at the 10-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown, and Randy Potter is going to be stopped. 43-yard kick, give him one on the return. But we do have a penalty flag, so the Tigers will probably be backed up even farther. But still, you know, you talk about that big punt block. You get it, the momentum switches you talked about, then boom, you shoot yourself in the foot. Oh, it's against Kansas. You see, what he did, he interfered with the kicker's Excuse me, the returner's right to catch the ball. You've got to give him two yards to catch the ball. Here it is. Let's take a look at it. And another penalty hurts that man. Okay, you're going to see him. Potter trying to make a fair catch there. But you've got to give him two yards in there. You gotta give him two yards in which an area to catch the football. That was a good call by the official. Six feet to six feet. That looks like one yard only. Now the Tigers, first and ten, ball on the 17, 319 left to go before intermission. They trail it 9-7. Bronco Levo. Bronco Levo straight up again in the middle, able to pick up about four out of the play. Game of about three. Olivo's a guy that is so huge, he's so put together. He had 2% body fat at one time. I think you and I decided what, our little finger? Our little finger. I was embarrassed <laughs> when he was talking about that yesterday. I mean, my left hand is about 4% body fat. I mean, his body was 4%. That's unbelievable. As I'm sitting here eating an apple fritter. Yeah. <laughs> he eats rice and vegetables and fruit. Larry Smith said this guy's diet is incredible. I'm stuck in an eight. Jones runs the option, he's going to keep it, and he's going to be dropped. Penalty flag is thrown, it's probably going to be a face mask call. Dewey Houston the third from that right end spot. The senior out of Illinois may have gotten the hand someplace it's not supposed to be. You know, when the quarterback is running the ball a lot, face mask is a big penalty because defensive players are chasing him warming him inside out and sometimes just like what happened to big old dewey that time you turn and reach what did we talk about terry allen saying penalties have been a problem they didn't have any at that point now penalties have cost him watch dewey right here he does a good job of running to the football but as he reaches and all he's doing is trying hard i think that should have been a five yard penalty he's got to let go maybe a little bit sooner not a 15 yarder but that's one of the tough things when the quarterback is running the football and you're playing real hard on defense 
inside of two and a half to play, first and ten for Missouri. Kansas with 48 yards and penalties this quarter alone. Olivo crosses Olivo the 40 the up here. to the 43. J.J. Johnson hanging on to the back. One of the things Kansas is trying to do on defense is play a little bit more of an eight-man front. And by that, we mean they're moving one of their safeties closer to the line of scrimmage so there are eight defenders within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Eight men up front. Last year, the Tigers were ninth in the NCAA in rushing the football, third in the Big 12. That was the second highest total in school history. Jones. Off the fingertips of tip to Corey Coleman, the senior out of Harvard City, California. They call him the most dependable receiver, but that ball wasn't well thrown by Corby. No, it wasn't. It looks like he rushed it a little bit, but a part of it had something to do with Kansas because Kansas is changing it up and blitzing and playing zone behind it. Different linebackers on each and every one. All right, the Missouri Tigers, two of five on third down situations. They face third and five. You know, I like... Stewie Houston's name. That's an all-pro name to me. You know, you never see Reggie White the third, Stewie Houston the third. I kind of like that. The last Stewie I knew was a pretty good lineman himself. Dewey Tillman. Olivo. Drops to the backfield. Drops at the 43. Maurice Gaddy and Brett McGraw. Brett McGraw made the first hit. That's the first we've called McGraw's name. Here's a guy who's a rodeo guy. Said he's a roper. Yeah, well, that's the biggest roper in the United States, and I'd hate to be that poor cow. What are they? Are they steers? Steers or cows? I mean, whatever they do, I wouldn't want that guy coming off a horse, landing on me. I'm telling you, he is a big one. It's 6'1", about 285. He says it's closer to 300, and the guy rides a Harley. I'd grab my daughters and pull them in the house if I saw this guy coming in on a Harley. He's a typical nose guard, though, Ron. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines game summary. Kansas, on their first possession, had a good touchdown drive. Point after was blocked. Missouri came back. Brock Olivo on that drive, 37 yards on five carries. He got the TD. And then Kansas comes up with a block punch, two 40-yard plays. Ended up with Garcia with a 32-yard field goal. And that is where we stand right now. 9-7. Kansas leads 131 left to play in the first half. You know, McGraw's an interesting guy. You know, he was the only guy in the press guy that didn't get his tie all the way around his neck. His neck was so big, he couldn't get it around. I mean, it was a, it was a typical nose guard picture. Debo had his last kick blocked. No, they got Jason Smith back in there, and this one's a high wobbly one, taking it about the 15. Tony Blevins, no return, so Larry Smith alternating putters. He just flipped on the turf. Jim Knox mentioned it early on, and that's what happened. 40-yard kick, Zippo on the return. And, you know, I know Larry Smith does not want to alternate punters. Punters, you want to get into a groove. But, obviously, he's not satisfied with either guy. And Zabo had a hamstring pull a couple of weeks ago that was slow in coming around. So that was one of the reasons. But the other reason, he was dissatisfied basically with both guys. Missouri with one timeout left with 124. They're on defense. Kansas just can't shoot themselves in the foot again. Going to locker with a 9-7 lead. Johnner, pass. No, incomplete. A little bit too far. Chandler looked like he may have had a handle on it. The Missouri defensive backs are playing so much man-to-man, -man, they're having a problem with footing. And I think the Kansas receivers are doing an excellent job of running patterns, and all they're doing is just running away from guys. They're pushing them to the inside and breaking to the outside. That's good scheme by the Kansas pass offense. I tell you what, Barry Allen would like to go in leading at halftime. He's got a pretty good record. As he has the lead at halftime, does he? Absolutely, 51 and 0, 51 and 0. But he leads at halftime. Got it. Runs into his own man. He's going to be dropped at the 10 with 113 to play. Marquise Gibson on the stop. Now Gibson's the guy we talked about before. He is a speed rush defensive end. Kansas not wasting any time inside of 55 seconds. Third and 15. Three-step drop. John has got to change direction. Tells him to go long, and he launches it. 
Robertson. James had it for Akili Robertson. And now they're going to be forced to punt with 42 seconds left, and Missouri still with a timeout. Yeah, and here's where some great strategy comes in between coaches in the last minute or two minutes of the half and of the game. And it'll be interesting to see what happens here. It'll be interesting to see if Missouri tries to go block the kick or they try to catch the ball on the punt return because no matter what, they'll be in good field position, probably on the Kansas side of the 50. Well, Dean Royal is kicking into a wind that's about 12 to 15 miles an hour. First kick was 43 yards. And he is standing in his own end zone. Looks like they're coming after it, Ron. The long snapper is Sean McDermott. Here they come. He gets it off. He is knocked down. And the penalty flag is thrown. And another penalty flag is thrown as the reception is made on the kick. Potter was upended, but the first one was Dean Royal and give him an Academy Award. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But you, that was, it's one of the negatives, though, of rushing the punter. You, 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 you take the chance of roughing the punter. Now the officials are going to have to have a conference on this one. Patrick Brown, the linebacker from Kansas, wants to be the Fesbian. I think Dean Royal may have, out, may have outdone him on that play. Well, you know, a good coach will coach the punter into those types of acting displays, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Well, we've got a running into the kicker and an interference call. This is interesting. Let's listen in. Referee Hal Dowden. Running into the kicker against the receiving team. The two-yard halo violation against the kicking team. So off track. We play the down. Well, once again, a penalty hurts. Terry Allen, Larry Smith gets new life. Well, what would you do here? I would come after him again. But here you're going to see Royal get the ball, but he gets run into. I mean, that was, that was a good call by the official. You know, it's very difficult for a defender coming up the field to bring his body under control when you're going so fast and you're trying so hard to block a kick. It's very hard to stop. Jay Robertson is the culprit, and again, Dean Royal standing in his own end zone. Randy Potter standing at his own 46, set to receive the kick. This time, as he backs off, Royal, a short kick spiral, and it's going to get a Missouri bounce, and the Tigers with 26 seconds left. Great field position. Only a 25-yard kick by Dean Royal. So we've got a little extracurricular going on. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that today. I know. Let's take a look at some scores from around the country. Keep you posted on that Michigan-Colorado game. And Colorado loses. Colorado better get that running game going. You saw that feedback offense last week. Told you. Penn State already leading. <laughs> Couple of them up. Uh, I'm telling you. Last for us inside an eight-court every now and then. Hey, Temple won a game, though, last week against Boston College. That was used for Ron Dickerson and his program. Missouri with a golden opportunity. 26 seconds left, and they have a timeout remaining. Kansas going blitz. They back off. Jones going for Pater, and the pass is going to be incomplete, almost intercepted. Kansas, that time, played zone defense, and they wanted Corby Jones to do exactly what he did, throw the ball down the field, because the Kansas defensive coaches do not believe that that man can beat them throwing the football. You'll see here he hesitates a little bit, but then he gets a lot of air underneath it and almost throws it to a Kansas defender. 20 seconds left. Second and 10. Jones on the option. Keeps it. Has some daylight. To the 25. Down to the 23. Tony Blevins providing some run support. The senior out of Kansas City, the field general. 11 tackles coming into this game and quickly Missouri to the line. First and 10, but only 13 seconds left. And it looks like they're going to kill the ball here to stop the clock. And he does. You know, like they say, Corby Jones can't beat you with his arm, but he can beat you with his feet. And that was a good example of it right there. 
Now, Larry Smith is complaining that four seconds went off the clock from the time it was snapped to the time it was grounded. Oh, come on, Larry, come on. <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not at pro field. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Larry Smith, he is in his fourth year. His fourth year is in his previous since at Tulane and Arizona have been successful ones. You know, and happy birthday to Larry Smith. Right. Yesterday he was 58 years old, and he got a big birthday present earlier in the year with an extension on his contract, and he deserves it. And I think the University of Missouri is very smart in extending this man because he'll bring continuity and consistency to this program that's, quite frankly, been up and down. In, in the last 10 years. Just from his defensive coordinator standpoint, he was telling us at one point they had five defensive coordinators in Missouri in five years. That's unbelievable because it's not fair to the players because they can never learn a system and prosper and improve within a system. And he's still arguing his case. One thing Larry Smith uh, was talking about, what has changed between his first year and now, is we don't have any bad practices anymore. Now I've got the guys thinking good practice. He's got them on a very rigid weight program. He feels this is, as far as lifting is concerned, his strongest team. Artie, that was impressive considering Southern Cal, Arizona. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And some of the numbers that these guys, these Missouri Tigers, put up in the weight room are unbelievable. So he's done a good job, and I believe this will be his last job. I think he really likes Missouri and enjoys it and wants to say, and by the way, he just won the argument. That was a convincing <laughs> argument. That was a birthday <laughs> present from the, the Big 12 to Larry. Two more seconds. 11 seconds left. First and 10, ball on the 22 for the Tigers, trailing by two. Jones, everybody out. The pass is going to be picked off at the five with six seconds left in the half. Jamie Harris with the pick. Corby Jones threw only three interceptions all of last year, but his pass efficiency rating was 11th in the Big 12. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. That was a very costly one, but the coach can still smile. It's a great example of zone defense. He's dropping back. He's looking at the quarterback. He sees the ball throw and breaks on the football. He doesn't play the receiver, Ron, in zone. He plays the football in the air, and that is clinic video right there. Excellent example of zone defense. That Corby Jones' father, Curtis, is also on the staff of Larry Smith as one of the defensive coaches. And Boy, I tell you what, Matt Jotter almost made a major mistake. He downed the ball. Artie, he was right on the goal line. You better know where you are in situations like that. Let's look at this again. This was almost a disastrous play for Kansas. He just wants to run out the clock and watch where he ends up. His foot. But don't step backwards oh, like that. My. Take one step backwards and go down and protect the football. He took three steps backwards. That was almost two more points for Missouri, but that is the end of the first half. Terry Allen is with Jim Knox right now. All right, Coach, you said big plays is going to be the key in this game, and so far you guys are coming off with the big play. Yeah, we got a big play. We needed that. Uh, we got a huge play there. It was uh, bad time management on our part. Uh, we tried to get the quarterback to call down the ball there, and lo and behold, we got the big play that uh, got us into the half with the lead. Other than that little running drive they had, Missouri did, you got to be pleased the way your defense is handling the running game. Yeah, we've got to hold up inside. They're going to try and bash us at us inside in the second half, but we got to stay sharp and put points on the board offensively when it, we get our opportunities now in the second half. All right, best of luck in the second half, Coach. Ron? All right, thank you very much, Jim Knox. Terry Allen in eight years as a head coach, 51-0, and he leads at halftime, and he leads this afternoon. Kansas on top of Missouri 9-7. Can wear shorts. This is the earliest these two teams have met, and the Kansas Jayhawks at halftime leading the Missouri Tigers 9 7. Hello once again, along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulet. You look at the numbers of that first half, Artie. First of all, Missouri plus four and a half as far as possession time. They're leading and rushing, but they seem like they're playing a little close to the vest. Yeah, I think they are playing it close to the vest, and both teams did not capitalize on great field position. After the block punt and after the short punt there at the end by Kansas, Missouri threw an interception. So you got to capitalize in games like this, Ron, on positive field position. Well, Kansas started off pretty good. They got a score on their opening drive. They missed the extra point, and then Missouri took over. And they finally played real kind of Missouri football. Rock Olivo is leading the way. Take a look at some of the highlights. There's a big block that allowed Olivo to go in for the score. Well, when he gets going, he's a tough guy, as we've talked about. About, and he just dives over the top there, but it's an outstanding job by his offensive line. 
Well, Missouri had an opportunity to hang a couple of more points on the board in the second quarter, but this pass of Corby Jones is going to be picked off. You know, and I'm surprised at some of the play selection down here. I thought Missouri would want to go for a little bit more of a chunk, chunk, chunk. Get five yards, get ten yards, and then try to score. Well, that Jamie Harris interception helped the Jayhawks, and as we head towards quarter number three, Kansas leads Missouri 9-7. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Games being played, Penn State starting to put it on Temple, 21-7, that's in the second. Later on today, it'll be San Diego State and Washington, Maryland taking on Florida State. Nebraska has just scored, and they're tied up with Central Florida at 7. Stanford and North Carolina later. Boy, I tell you, John Hester is going to have to start putting the ball up because they trail 17 nothing in the third, Ernie. That shocks me, but it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Colorado's got to run the football, and obviously they're not in that football game. And Ohio State, who will be playing Missouri later on, they leave Bowling Green in the first. More to come from Lawrence, Kansas, right after this. Oh, bathroom. Oh, bathroom. Bathroom, bathroom. Oh, yes. Yeah. Jim Knox, thank you very much. Let's take a look at our sit-go numbers from the first half, and the first down's about even, rushing yards, all Missouri. Anything stand out, Artie? Well, the one thing that stands out, and it's a trade at the University of Missouri, is this right here. They've had the ball almost five minutes more than the University of Kansas, and everything else is about even. The only thing that strikes me, too, I don't like this number. That's what Larry Smith was talking about. I think he expected that they'll rush for at least 150 yards in the first half. Nickman to kick it off with the win, and it'll be deep in the end zone. We're yet to have a return. And Kansas, who won the toss at the beginning of the game, deferred, went on defense. Now they'll go on offense to begin the third. Matt Johnner still calling the signal. Well, I, it'll be interesting to see now what adjustments the coaches made that happened. If I was Kansas, I would continue with the game plan because I think it's solid. If I were Missouri, I would play a little bit more zone on defense, Ron, because they are very confused and at times just getting beat in their man coverage team. Uh, Kansas did a nice job on the offensive line on that first half. They weren't sure they could handle the defensive front side of Missouri. John is going to put it up in the air, the first play, and the pass is going to be complete. And Michael Taylor just scoops it up like a shortstop. Pretty good coverage on the play. Carlos Fosey was right there. But, you know, it's one of those passes that's just about impossible to defend because it was thrown so low. And as you said, Chandler did a nice job of scooping the ball, getting his hands underneath it before it hit the turf. Good concentration. was close, though, but the official was standing right there. Good job by our camera guy. First and ten, Kansas. First possession of the third. Van has a blocker in front of him, and he maybe gets Van one on the play. He was wrapped up on that play by Barry Odom, the junior out of Ada, Oklahoma. Sometimes Barry Odom gets overwhelmed, and the defensive coaches were really concerned. He's only six foot two twenty, but he needs to hang in there. He's got great instincts as a football player, and he's believe me, he is not six foot two twenty. He is 5'11", 210. <laughs> I stood next to him yesterday, but he's got outstanding football instincts. Kansas, who lost their leading receiver and rusher last year, trying to make up for it this season. Second and nine. Johnner goes upstairs again. He's got a man in the double coverage, and the pass is incomplete. That was almost a completion. Despite the fact he was double covered, Chandler almost made the spectacular. And there's a roughing the passer call against the University of Missouri. When Johnner threw that pass, he just got decked.
You know, Gibson, that, that was an ignorant foul in my view. Okay, the ball was clearly delivered, and that's not the kind of control that Larry Smith was talking about to his team at halftime. It can't give Kansas extra opportunities with ignorant fouls. They had nine penalties last week against Michigan, five this afternoon. Van stops, pops to the left side, penalty flag is thrown. Van picks up three, and we're going to have a holding call on the Jayhawks. Well, it looks like Michael Lee, number 50, the left tackle, was the, the culprit that time. And it's a good thing in the NC2A they don't call the numbers out. No. They thought about it. They thought about it, but you know, that's the good thing about having this microphone in front of us. We can. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. Watch him right here. There you go. And he grabs. Whoa, well... You know, Michael, if you're going to hold, Ron, hold inside. But when the guy starts to run away from you, let go of the jersey. Because everybody sees that. And you can see that jersey just coming off the pad. Michael looks like he's been held a couple times. Look at that jersey. Just pulled all up around his neck. First and 19 now for Kansas. Ball on their own 41. Van tries the left side of that Missouri defense led by Justin Wyatt there to stop him. Tackle by number 19, Justin Wyatt. You know, we, we talked about this play yesterday. I, I don't agree with that call. You, I think that's the situation. You want to move the pocket, run a bootleg, get out on the corner, and throw the football. Kansas is not a trap football team. And to run a play like that in that situation, I think is ill-advised. Second down and 20. Got or no, now goes back in the shotgun. The tight end, Sean McDermott, goes in the backfield. Goddard steps up, he's got some room. Crosses the 45, up to about the 48-yard line. He takes the dive, and he's hit hard. What happens when you're a blitzing defense and you play a lot of man-to-man, teams -man, are created in the pass rush lanes by the defenders. So the quarterback has a better opportunity to scramble. In this replay, we're looking through the eyes of one of the safeties, and you're going to see a hole just open up because, as you can see, the defenders are coming hard up the field, and they are taken out of their pass rush lane. That's a good decision by the quarterback. Just take a seat. Third and 11. Oh, step back is Van. They fake to him. Got it. Is he going to get away? He does. The pass is thrown, and it's going to be incomplete. Randy Potter from the quarterback spot. Really put the pressure on number eight. Well, number eight was Mark Tess Young, but Randy Potter is the one who really came on and made Jada step up. Potter's having a big day coming off the corner. But what's got to happen, though, when the passing game clicks? It's not only the quarterback, but it's also the receivers. And Chandler's got to turn around and come for the football. He's got to turn around faster on that, Ron, and go get the ball like he did earlier in the game. The Missouri defense really doesn't have a personality yet this year since it's early on, but I think they're going to start getting it. Potter may be the man who helped with that. Royal, a high, wobbly kick. From the seven. Randy Potter, not much running room. 44 yards on the kick for Dean Royal. And with 12 minutes even left in quarter number three, Kansas leads by a new. That was the best time in the world. And then uh, to do it again this early in the season, I mean, that's, that feels real good. I didn't think I was going to make it at first, and then I had a real good block by, uh, by Ron, by Brett. And uh, the feeling of getting an end zone, and then running to the sidelines, seeing uh, Coach Allen ready to congratulate me, I mean, that was a, that was a good feeling. <laughs> and Patrick Brown with a couple of interceptions for touchdowns in their opening game of the year. That's an NCAA record. You know, he wants to be an actor, he says, and kind of reminds me of Wesley Snipes a little bit, I think, you know? He says his favorite actor is Harrison Ford. Yeah, his favorite actress is Angela Bassett. That's a good choice. I like that. I like and his that. favorite director 
is John Woo from Broken Arrow fame. You know, that's all that so violent movies and stuff. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but he said his favorite announcer is a guy by the name of John Woo. He's amazing. You know what? He's got good choices. He's got great choices there. That's because I told him I know some people in Hollywood that help him out. He's got one sack this afternoon. 12 minutes left in quarter number three. Artie Picatino, Jim Knox, Bronson was coming your way from Lawrence, Kansas. Battle of the Border going on, and we've got a good one. Devin West, that's his first Both real areas. good carry of the afternoon as he gets up to the 20-yard line, pick up of about seven on the play. You know, Larry Smith wants to come out in this drive now, Ron, and make a statement. And he wants to make a physical statement. That's what coaches mean when they say, we got to go control the line of scrimmage and take control of the game. The way you do it is go beat up the guys on defense. They have the people to do it. This team, Missouri, four back from last year that gained over 500 yards rushing the football. West of the tailback, spot facing second and three. Blackwell is the fullback. West. Right side. West carry. Got much. And the only other team last year to do that was Texas A&M, who we'll see next week. We did Southwest Louisiana, 11.30 Central Time. Hope you join us for that ball game. And Southwest Louisiana has the second largest offensive line in the country behind Wisconsin. I can't wait to see those guys. Maybe I can. <laughs> we'll have to see. Third down and one. Missouri two for six on third down opportunities this afternoon. This would be a major stop for the Kansas defense to take a point off. Jones pitches back up to the 25-yard line. Good for the first down. Jason Thorne bringing down Devin West. That looked like an audible at the, at the line of scrimmage because knowing Larry Smith, he wanted to take that football and pound it up in there. But it looks like Jones saw something in the defensive alignment and checked off, and it was a good decision. They got the shoulder pads popping. Well, it sounds good, but hey, that's what kind of game this is. People flying around and really hitting each other. Well, Foran really understands this defensive package, and one thing that our Kansas coaches would like is to just let his players play within their defensive system. He's one that can do that. First and 10, ball on the 26. He's going to put it up in the air. He's got a man right down the middle. And the pass is going to be well overthrown. Intended for Corey Coleman. We are at Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Under the partly cloudy skies. A battle of the border. The 106th meeting between Kansas and Missouri. And we have 9.59 left to play in quarter number three. And the Jayhawks lead the Tigers 9-7. Jim Knox, Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thulin. Coming your way. You know, talking about Corby Jones, his dad is the defensive line coach here, and nothing like a quarterback whose dad is the coach, or one of the coaches. Second and ten, Weston Blackwell in the backfield. Coleman in motion. On the option, Corby Jones took a big hit, able to get the pitch away, but not much running room. Maury Gaddy coming up from the strong safety spot to make the stop. But boy, I tell you, Corby Jones took a hit and a half on that one. Well, Kansas is obviously gone into this game and said, Corby Jones will not beat us running the football on the option. And as I talked about in the first half, if he does pitch the ball, everybody goes swarm the football. But they are going to make Corby Jones pay every time he runs an option. And that's exactly what happens here again. If you keep hitting that quarterback, he's not going to want to run the option later on. Third down and 11 for Missouri. From the shotgun. Jones is going to be blitzed. Brown is after him. And they're going to bring him down. He throws it. It's incomplete. No penalty play. Well, they don't blitz a whole lot, but Patrick Brown came from that outside linebacker spot and really put the pressure on. That was a wonderful call that time by Artel Weekend, the defensive coordinator. You know, he coached Bryce Pop at Northern Iowa, and he compares Patrick Brown, not in size, but in style to Bryce Pop. But that was a wonderful call, very timely, and he's changing it up a lot here, and he's got that Missouri passing game completely off balance. Now Jason Smith will kick it away. Cody Blevins standing on his own 40. Here they come again, and he gives it away this time. 
That was a sure block for Kansas, but they're still going to get great field position as the ball is going to be down at about the 49-yard line. Jason Harris, number 23, the senior out of Fort Worth, Texas, put the pressure on Smith. But Kansas, with good field position, has the football here in the third. Alertly, Smith avoids them as great poise and punch the ball. That is a great play by the punter. And I tell you, it's an outstanding rush by that guy right there. That would have been Dewey Houston the second because that would have been the second punt block for Kansas. First and 10, 24 yards on the kick. Kansas with the ball on Missouri's 49 yard line. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Pan up to the 40 yard line. I think Terry Allen and his offensive staff have to be extremely pleased with Eric Van's efforts this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, for some reason, he got off to a slow start, whether it was injury, conditioning, mind on other things, but he is clearly focused today, and that man, Terry Allen, talked about this is a big game for Van to turn it loose, and so far, he has turned it loose. to Van again this time. Van carried. 40 down to the 39. Harold Piercy on the top. Jim Knox, what do you have for us? Ron, interesting story about Eric Van. He's also a pretty good baseball player, but this past spring, he redshirted in baseball. The reason, he wanted to do full, full time to football in the Terry Allen system and learning the offense. And he also wanted to have a heck of a senior year. So far, he's doing that today. And the updated numbers on Eric Van, 91 yards, 18 rushes. That is by far his best effort of the 97 season. Van, the lone setback. Matt Goddard on third and one will get the first down. Well, at least he went forward that time. You know? <laughs> That's right. You know, it's amazing. For such a simple play, the quarterback sneak, there are many varieties. Sometimes the quarterback takes the ball and goes to the side. Sometimes he delays it. Sometimes he goes backwards when he's getting his, his knee down like he almost got a safety before. But for a simple play, there's about nine or ten varieties of quarterback sneak. He did the safe one. Straight ahead. Yeah, straight ahead. First and ten, ball on the 38. Inside of seven and a half here in the third quarter. Man will try the right side. Just pure effort on his part as he gets up to the 30. Before Pearcy again knocks him out of bounds. Van showed a little bit of a speed. Barry Mazook, the linebacker, had a chance to get him, couldn't wrap him up. Watch the right guard, Sean Bang, come around. Excuse me, Jerome Park, come around and get up the field. But what happens here, Van dips his shoulder inside, he freezes the defender, and then he goes outside and gets more positive yardage. That's great trickery running. Dip inside, run outside. Better Hancock now split wide of the left. Hancock crossing across the middle. They've got two men in the pattern. It's intended for Chandler, not incomplete. Kevin Ford, the linebacker right in the middle, the senior out of Denison, Texas, is the one who tipped it. In an interception last week against Eastern Michigan. And Marcus Allen of the old Oakland Raiders and Kansas City Chiefs is his second uncle. Marcus Allen. Not too bad. Third and one. Goddard kept it the last time. Hancock and Roberson. The receivers inside Van up the middle. Look out. Goodbye. Kansas was concerned that his front five couldn't control the front of Missouri defensively. I think he controlled them a lot on that play. Well, that was a tricky drive by the University of Kansas, but you got to credit the guys up front. It looked like Missouri was in some kind of stunt, which is why the hole opened up so much. But offensive linemen at the University of Kansas sustaining their blocks. Joe Garcia on to add the extra point. He's had one block already this afternoon. Got it blocked again. Donnell Jones again on the block. He had two blocks last year. He's got two blocks this year. 
But it is Eric Van right up the middle and with 7-11 left to play. In quarter number three, Kansas leads Missouri by eight. Eric Van with his first 100-yard game rushing the football in his career here at Kansas, and he's given the Jayhawks an eight-point advantage, 16-7, and a lucky 7-11 left to be played. This one will be returned by Devin West from his seven. Straight up the middle, has some running room to the 30, up to the 31-yard line. Let's take a look at that touchdown run again by Eric Van, and there wasn't a whole lot of guys from the secondary of Missouri in this picture. Well, what happens, Missouri's defensive line is in stunt, and the Kansas offensive line stays on their block. But what happens also is Missouri ganged up with 10 guys on the line of scrimmage because it was third and short. So what happens if you break the line of scrimmage in situations like that, there is no one there to make the tackle. And that's a gamble that didn't pay off that time for the Missouri defense. But you gotta do it, because otherwise you can't stop the isolation. That's why, that's why defensive coaches like me have gray hair. <laughs> Your hair looks pretty good. Not mentioning greasy formula, but it looks good. 702 to play here in the third. Jones on the option. Able to split a couple of defenders up to the 45 and the or 35 to the 37 before Jason Thorne makes the stop. North Carolina State tied up to number 19 Clemson. Boy, Colorado's taking a thumping. I am shocked. Me too. I am absolutely shocked. I think Michigan remembers the last time they were up there. Auburn trailing Mississippi, Penn State by three TDs over Temple. That's at halftime. Michigan State all over Memphis. Of Conference USA, Southwest Texas State a leader in Nebraska. Both hit the floor to be a little stubborn there. Ohio State by two TDs. Second and four after a six-yard pickup. James and Olivo in the backfield. Olivo. Hit right at about the 37-yard line. Steve Bratton. The junior out of Colorado. He has really grown up. His dad's a coach, number... 54. His dad's a coach that they really like, Bratton. They think this guy has grown up in the system and he is going to be a good player this year for him. You know, he's a real tough guy. His two heroes are Mike Singletary and Dick Butkus. And like you said, his dad's a coach. And that's great because his dad will teach him football instinct and football intelligence. And he wants to be an FBI agent when he grows up. <laughs> he can protect us. Third and two for Missouri. The battering ram is in the tailback spot. Jones on the keeper. Bosses the 40, gets the first down. We're still waiting for Jones to have that one big run. He had a couple of them last year when these two teams met, but I think you got to give your credit to some of that Kansas defense already. They're swarming them. They're swarming them, but what they're doing, they're penetrating the line of scrimmage, and they're not allowing that Missouri rushing attack to get going. The best way to stop a great run offense or rushing offense is get in the backfield and disrupt it before it gets going. 48 yards rushing the football for Corby Jones this afternoon. At 68 last week. On first and 10, Olivo looks right, goes left. Dewey Houston, the third on the stop. Rock Olivo, his dad played for the St. Louis Cardinals. He's an English major, says, I want to be a football coach. Updating his numbers. The number now is 100. This time, Darrell Wallace, 101 to pass him as Missouri's all-time leading rusher. You know what you got to love about him? Two summers ago, he went out and trained with Jerry Rice. The Jerry Rice of the San Francisco 49ers learned about eating and learned about conditioning from the best condition guy in the NFL. Said he was just awestruck the whole time. Kept looking over at Jerry Rice as he's working out for him. James and Olivo. Jones on the option. They get penetration. They run right by him. Jones carrying a couple of defenders with him, including Patrick Brown and big number 70, Brett McGraw. Gets inside Kansas territory. Pick up a five on the play. That was a good job that time by the Kansas front of moving the pot, of moving the line of scrimmage 
down the line of scrimmage. And that guy right there, Tug McGraw, as he's affectionately known, did a nice job. You know, he has an uncle, Thumb, who used to play with the Detroit Lions in the 50s. Thumb was one defensive tackle, and a guy by the name of Alex Harris was the other defense. That must have been some combination. That is not too bad. Third down and one for the Tigers. Olivo is stopped. He is not going to get it. The second effort is going to put it close. Dewey Houston, the third, is the one who really jammed things up. Maurice Gaddy came up from the safety spot to help out. You know, Ron, that's exactly what I was talking about in terms of the defensive front of Kansas getting penetration. Watch this. They relocate the line of scrimmage in the backfield, and it never allows the running game to get going. Good defensive linemen in short yardage situations relocate in the offensive backfield the line of scrimmage. It is fourth and one. Larry Smith and company going to go for it. Their first fourth down attempt this year. Oliva. That'll be a first down. They stopped him right at about the 45. But the forward progress will give him the first and move the change. Nice job by the Missouri offensive line that time of surging and knocking the Kansas defensive line back. Watch that whole right side there. They're going to take off. They're going to get the, the shoulders underneath the pads of the Kansas guys and Brock goes over the top. Do you know, Ron, that in 1996, Missouri was 15 out of 22 on fourth down tries. That's almost 70 percent. That's very impressive. 2.40 to play. Quarter number three. Brock and James down in the backfield. Jones is going to put it up. Looks right. Starts to run left. And he is going to be dropped at about the 45-yard line. Here goes Dewey Houston, the third, who is having a whale of a game from their right end spot. Houston's the leader up front, no question about it. He is their best pass rusher, and he showed it there. Nice job that time by the Kansas secondary of blanketing receivers. They're not letting Murchison here to have any room in which to catch a pass. But you got to credit the guys up front for doing a good job of rushing the pass. And you know, that was a split back formation that time, and Missouri is not a tricky offense. Everybody in the ballpark knew it was going to be a pass because it was split back and not the I formation. That was really a coverage sack. Jimmy Harris did a nice job on Murchison. Lost of nine on the play. On the option, the quick tip. Sutter sets. Salivo gets away from Houston. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Dewey Houston had a good chance to knock him down. Couldn't get it. Tony Blevins had to come up and make the stop. And Corby Jones is very slow to get up. You're going to see an example of Ron Warner, the outside backer from Kansas, just laying the wood to Corby Jones. And it's one of the things, if you play quarterback in an option system, you sometimes have got to pay the price. And that's one heck of a hit by Ron Warner, but it's a good job by Corby Jones of going down and trying to just alleviate some of the blow. Well, Ryan Douglas is going to come into the game. Now, that name is very familiar here in Lawrence, Kansas, because his father, Bobby Douglas, has his name up here in the stadium, played for Kansas, but his son plays for Missouri. He is a redshirt freshman, 6'2", 201. You know, we asked Larry Smith about this yesterday, and he said he would just simplify the game plan if Ryan does come in the game. But he says they probably won't change a whole lot. Just keep handing the football off. Third and 11. But Douglas is going to put it up. He's right-handed. Let the fly and complete. Interesting call. This young man has no chance to warm up in his first play he throws the football. Uh, yeah, it's very, very hard. And I, I think you've got to let a quarterback get into the flow of the game. And Larry did say we will throw fewer passes. But what he didn't say was that when he did come in, yeah. they throw a pass on the first down. Now, if Jones is out of the game, this will be a real blow to his Missouri offense. Well, you take a guy who rushed over 700 yards out of your lineup last year and who really is the trigger man for everything. This time, very little rush. With the win, into the end zone. Kansas leading 15-7 with 103 left to play in the third. We'll get it first and 10 from their own 20. And 
Corby Joe's just trying to get the cobwebs out of his head. Yeah, it looks like he'll be okay because one thing, option quarterbacks are taught how to take a hit. And that's what he did that time to begin the fall after you pick the ball and a defender is trying to level you. Now these are important games for both teams for the Kansas Jayhawks. They have four of their first five at home and then they head to the road. And look at this schedule coming up. At Cincinnati and they're home against Oklahoma, at Texas Tech, at Colorado, and they finish up with Nebraska. You know, all those games are winnable, though, except for maybe the last two, Colorado and Nebraska. Jonner bobbles the snap. He just grabs it and takes a seat. As we are inside of a minute here in the third. You know, it looked like he pulled out a little bit too soon on that, and an experienced quarterback that's a senior and has had eight starts can't make that mistake. That's the kind of mistake you expect out of Douglas on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Kansas felt they tried to do too much offensively versus TCU. They wanted to pare it down a little bit. They've done it effectively. Missouri out of the blitz and they pick up the run handily. Harold Piercy coming up from that free safety spot to put the hit on. You know, Piercy, the coaches were talking about him, that he's kind of an unproven guy. Time will tell how good he can be. And one of the things that he can do well, though, is blitz and is put pressure in passing situations, which is exactly what they did there. And he's from Kansas City. Kansas lets the clock run down as the third quarter comes to an end. But it has been a good three quarters for Matt Jonner and the Kansas Jayhawks. They lead in this ballgame, 15-7. We'll return to Memorial Stadium after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Kansas called this game in Missouri a golden opportunity. There's so much riding on this football game outside of just a one-loss kind of record figure. So recruiting and everything. Terry Allen didn't want to put too much pressure on this game. Either did Larry Smith, but both need the importance. Absolutely. Beginning the fourth quarter. Kansas with the ball in the lead. Jonner with a bunch of time. Dumps it off in the flat. Completes to Brian Gray. He's got the first down, and he's up to the 40-yard line. Julian Jones from the free safety, the redshirt freshman out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, on the coverage. One of the key guys in the game plan for Kansas is Brian Gray. He's an in-between, a wide receiver, and a tight end. Here, they're playing man combination against him. He loses his man, runs all the way across the field, and obviously gets delivered a perfect pass. Now, they wanted to move the tight end around, and they're doing it. Eric Van going to be swarmed over by a bunch of Tigers. During the commercial break, we were talking about this possession for Kansas. Do you feel this is important for them, probably the most important possession? Yeah, because if Kansas can go in and score, you're winning then 22-7. to And Missouri is not a catch-up team. Missouri is a take-control team. They do not have the weapons to catch up from a 15- or 16-point deficit. And there's the man that has really helped Kansas today. 129 yards rushing the football. That's one yard short of all of Missouri's rushing. They have 130 yards rushing the football. Got a straight drop once again, a load of time. Unleashes it, the pass is complete. Short of the first down, Akili Roberson with his second catch of the afternoon. Jim Knox, you've got an update on us with Corby Jones. That's right, Ron. Corby Jones, the Missouri quarterback, will return to the game by diagnostic diagnosis on Corby. Just got his bell run, but he's okay, and he will return as soon as Missouri gets the ball back. Yeah, that is good news. We're glad the young man's okay. You know, and what's happening again, when the quarterback gets time, and Missouri is playing man-to-man -man defense, it gives the receivers time to run away and get open. Well, the two fingers of Kansas offense really doing the job today. John and Van. Third and three. Van has a blocker. Stutter step. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. We'll give him about a half a yard. Interesting call coming up. Joshua on the stop. Sam Joshua, the senior out of Miami, Florida, has played just about every position in that linebacker core for Missouri. Interesting call on Terry Allen not taking any chance. No, he's not, but you know, this is a great situation for a fake punt. Even though Kansas swore to us yesterday, they don't have the fake punt up. This would be a good time to do it. 
Dean Royal, a 43-yarder, a 25-yarder, and a 44-yarder. Averages out to 37.3 so far this afternoon. A couple inside the 20. High kick. He's tailing this one. Potter's not going to even make an effort to catch it as it goes into the end zone. 52 yards on the kick by Dean Royal. Well, let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Conference leaders in our category this week. Conference leaders in total defense. Kansas also numero uno in the NCAA. Absolutely. In this conference, Kansas, Kansas State, Texas A&M, they all play great defense in Nebraska, too. I'm not sure, though, that Kansas' defense is as good as they have played them. No, I thought they played two inferior opponents, you know, TCU and Alabama Birmingham. I mean, they did not have quarterbacks on either of those teams. And if a team doesn't have a quarterback, as a defensive coach and a defensive front of players, you can have your way with them. But before you write us, all you Kansas fans, the coach did the same thing. <laughs> Don't write us. Trailing by eight, Missouri first and ten, their own 20. Three-step drop for Jones. Pass, excellent catch. The ball is dropped. And they're going to say it was good, and it could have been a fumble. It rolled out of bounds. Eddie Brooks had it in his hands. You know, it brings up an interesting topic, and we talked to both coaches about that yesterday, that playing, quote, inferior opponent at the beginning of the year. Some people like to do it, and some don't. But in today's day and age, where people want to go to bowl games, I think it's important to get wins. Kansas plus 83 as far as total yardage. Jones to Devin West. West has been very quiet this afternoon, but that was good enough for the first down. That was his ninth rush at 16 yards coming into that carry. You know, it'll be interesting here to see how patient the Missouri coaching staff and Larry Smith are in trying to drive the ball down the field because you don't want to make a mistake here but you want to get into the end zone and then either go for two or have a field goal win for you later on and there's still a lot of time left over 12 minutes jones on the option first and 10 up over the 30 up to the 40 out of bounds at the 41 yard line and again it is dewey houston the third we have called his name probably, what, 15 times already this afternoon? At least. And I'll tell you, he's an intelligent football player that loves to play the game of football. And to me, that's half the battle to being a good football player. He loves to play it, and he's going to do whatever it takes to make himself a better football player. And that sets up a second down in one situation for the Tigers. Again, it is West, blasting over the left side, following the block of Beeble and Morris. And we have a penalty flag thrown, and another one is thrown. It looked like some extracurricular activity downfield, and it looked like it's on Tony Blevin from Kansas. Well, the personal foul is against Kansas, but the bottom line is there's still 11.06 left. Kansas is in this football league, uh, game, and that is something Terry Allen was hoping for yesterday Ten afternoon balls. when we talked to him. Personal foul against the base head. First down. We'd love, love to be in the game in the fourth quarter. I think that, that particularly what transpired in the final game last year, you know, we're, we're wondering, uh, as a staff and as a team, what type of football team we are. If we can take it in the fourth quarter with Missouri, then we'll turn the corner and watch it. Well, he can't afford those penalties if they want to stay in it here in the fourth quarter. But he does have an eight-point advantage. Jones rolls left, steps up, sidearms it. Pass is going to be complete. Pick it, Lehman. To the 17-yard line, good for yet another first down. That was an interesting play. It was not pretty. It was not a pretty no, pass. No, no. It kind of quacked up there, but Lehman slipped as he made the catch. But the bottom line is it moved to change. They're going to watch Jones come out to the left here. He's going to stop. He's going to look. He's going to throw off of his back foot. The ball just floats right into Lehman's hands, and it's a nice catch. Pick up a 17, ball is at the 23, first and 10, Mizzou. 
Keep it on the ground to the fullback, Ernest Blackwell. The penalty flag is thrown. Boy, you don't want to get those penalties down this, this way. And again against the You know, Ron, as a football coach, you never minded aggressive penalties or physical penalties. But when you get ignorant penalties like these two penalties have been, that just drives you nuts because that's a lack of discipline and it's a lack of self-proposal. Against the defense, automatic first down. Not only do you give up the yardage, you give them first down. Well, yeah, and you just, you know, you just got to be smarter than that as a football player because it's hard enough to stop people anyway. You just can't give away 30 yards on a drive like this to 10 minutes to go in the game. Now you also start thinking, if Missouri scores, and that's still a big hit, are they going to go for two or one? They're going to go for one. You buy my supper tonight if they go. First and goal, ball is on the nine. Five men on the line of scrimmage for Kansas. They back off one as Devin West drives the left side, inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Missouri is so tough in this area. Oh, yeah, they're really tough in this area, and now that offensive line is taking control of the defensive front of Kansas, which is what Coach Smith wanted at halftime. A little hold there, but that's okay. Nice job of running up the field by Kevin. He's got to make sure, though, he holds on to the football. Ball is on the three. Second and goal for Missouri. 9.35 to play in the ballgame. of running the option, it involves a lot of ball handling. And that time, Jones banged into what looked like when he was coming out here, one of his own guys, and lost the football. Because the ball, the quarterback, when he's running the option, he carries the ball in front of him. And that's exactly what happened there. Missouri had 28 turnovers last year, worse than the conference. 22 resulted in 122 opponent points. Man, left side. Shutter steps up to the 20, hit hard, but not before getting to the 21-yard line. Their turnover margin last year for Missouri, minus 15, 106 in the NCAA. And if you're a full control offense like they are, you, you can't do that. I mean, that is not being found offensively and defensively. Another good job up front by the Kansas offensive line, but he is running through there virtually untouched because... Kansas has got too many blockers against that Missouri front. So out manning him at the point of attack. Nine minutes to play. Van to the right side, gets one block, sees the seam, crosses the 25, penalty flag is thrown, and that's going to be a holding call. Calder off Easter is the man who made the tackle. Almost 150 yards in penalties between these two teams. Well, you know, it's the beginning of the year, Phil, and people are not as finely tuned as you want to be, you know, in November and October. And unfortunately, you're seeing some of those rough edges come out today. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, the first down. Well, there's some Jayhawk fans here that yep. don't particularly care for the call. And, and neither did Coach Allen. Well, he doesn't, but his team has over 100 yards in penalties. Here's his reaction after the flag. You know what? It's the same Division One AA and one a and I agree with Terry Allen. It's the same. You are just as intense on the sideline. You just have bigger stadiums, and maybe your outside activities magnify a lot. Absolutely. Winbush, the freshman, hasn't seen a lot of action because Van has played so well. He has the ball now, and he jumps it about the 16-yard line. 
And Terry Allen talked about that because there are a lot of people, you know, already make a lot. Oh, can this guy recruit in 1A? You know, he's with one double A. Is he going to be able to handle all this? We spent a great deal of time with him. He seems like he's really got his ducks in a row. He knows what to expect. And I even asked him, are you ready to handle big time adversity? And he said, absolutely, yes. I know that one of these days it could happen. Well, he's a fit here at the University of Kansas. But he also brought seven members of his Northern Iowa staff. So he's got people around him that he knows and know him. Second and 16, 7.55 to play. Look out, Gunner being a right. Now he's got some room if he hurries, but he can't get away. From the Missouri line, Jeff Marriott. Steve Erickson is the one who really put the pleasure on him, who's been a real pleasant surprise for the coaching staff. Erickson, the sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. You talk about eyes in the back of your head. That's a wonderful job that time by John Er, of feeling pressure behind him to try to scramble out and make some positive yards. I'm really impressed with this guy's scrambling and moving around ability today. Well, we haven't seen Zach Wegner, so obviously they're very pleased with what Jonner is doing. Wegner, the better thrower of the two. Brian, the right side of Winbush, not much running room on third and 15. It was just about 7-10 to play in the ball game. Kansas will be forced to kick it away. You know, you got to be careful as a coach in this situation not to continue with the game plan. Keep attacking the Missouri defense. Throw the ball. Do what you've been doing. That's why you're ahead. Don't become conservative now with seven minutes left in the game. You can't play not to lose. you got to play to win the ball. Yeah, but you got to attack. Football today, Ron, is attacking on offense, the kicking, and on defense. Dean Wells had a pretty good afternoon. He stands at about his six-yard line. Randy Potter on his own 35. And Royal gets off a boomer. Potter is going to be chased back all the way down to the 10. That may go into the end zone, and it does. 78 yards for Dean Royal on the kick. And we have a timeout. 6.27 left to play in the ballgame. 15-7, the Jayhawks lead. Texas A&M will be out for revenge as the Raging Cajuns from southwestern Louisiana charge College Station. Last year in Lafayette, the Cajuns upset the Aggies with a stellar defensive performance. This time, the Aggies will not take the Cajuns lightly. Join us next Saturday morning at 11.30 Central for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Corby Jones, it rests on his legs and his arms. 6.27 to play in the ballgame following an official 82-yard punt. Missouri first and 10, ball on their own 20. The reverse. To Ken Lehman, he's got some blockers and some running room. Over the 30, up to the 40-yard line, Tony Blevins finally knocks him out of bounds. Wonderful, wonderful call in terms of keeping the defense off balance. That was set up perfectly. They start an option to the offensive right. You're going to see, but then you're going to see Lehman just come around and take the pitch. That was a perfectly executed reverse and perfect timing by Larry Smith and his coaching staff. And he pays the price at the end. Tony Blevins just lowers the boom on him. Just over 220 total yards for Missouri in this ballgame. Well under what they had thought they would get. Olivo, the right side. He's going to be wrapped up, but not before he crosses the 45 up to the 48. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines game summary for this afternoon. Well, you can see what Missouri has done rushing the football. 155 yards. Kansas at 145. I'm surprised Kansas has that many, and I'm shocked that Missouri doesn't have more. And look at that. The penalties have really hurt Kansas. But they're still ahead. But they're still ahead. Missouri with seven minutes more possession time. They had 38 minutes last week against Eastern Michigan. They averaged about 32 minutes a game last year. Time is now becoming a factor. Jones on the pitch. Olivo has to just cover it up at the 40. Say, Brock Olivo made one whale of a play there. That had disaster written all over it. And so did Patrick Brown, the defender, who smacked in to Corby Jones on that. Back to the We're going to see Brock get the pitch. It's behind him, obviously, but he does an outstanding job of falling on the ball to maintain possession. Well, the two linebackers for Kansas, Ron Warner and Patrick Brown, have taken their licks on Corby Jones today. They'll have something to talk about tonight when they go home because they're roommates. 
Third and 11, we've tried a five minutes to play. Jones is going to put it up. Great drop. In the flat. Incomplete knockdown, almost intercepted. Intended for Kent Lehman. Jason Harris on the coverage, almost had a pick. You know, when Larry Smith came to Missouri, he tried to throw the football. Then he stopped throwing the football and began to ram it. And now, when he has to throw the football, it's very difficult for him because everyone in the ballpark that time knew it was going to be a pass. Ken Lehman had the position because Harris was about six yards off. Tony Blevins set to get the punt on fourth and 11, 449 to play. Missouri averaged only 30 yards a kick, and this one's end over end low. Blevins has a chance to field it, and he does at the 18. There is a clip, no flag, there comes the flag. And that'll be against Kansas. That was so obvious after the 44-yard punt. And the Jayhawks are going to add to their total of 120 yards in penalty. Barry Allen was a quarterback himself. His offensive coordinator was also a quarterback in college. In fact, Allen replaced his offensive coordinator in college once he graduated. That's the illegal use of hands against Kansas with 4.38 to play. They still lead 15-7. In 4.38, the Indian War Drum Trophy is going to be presented. Will it be Kansas or Mizzou? Right now, Kansas leads by eight. Let's check in with Jim Knopf. All right, Rod, John Jefferson, one of the all-time great wide receivers in the NFL, played a number of years with San Diego and the Green Bay Packers, actually works out for Kansas University, and you are up in the administrative side. You're helping mold these young athletes for the real world. Yeah, initially I came here as a coach for four years, and I got into administration. And what I do is I help the student athletes do it for the real world by preparing them for jobs and a career placement program. They'll have coach in his blood because you're on the sideline. You could be up in a nice cushing, cush, uh, kick back up there in the stands, and now you're on the sidelines rooting like Kansas Jayhawks on. You know, I've tried sitting in the stands before, and you find out you don't belong there. A lot of times my wife always tells me, why won't you sit with me and the kids in the stands? But I'm not used to being up there. But we're proud of what we're doing here at the University of Kansas. Uh, we have a career placement program that's going very well. We place former athletes in good positions, and uh, we feel good about what we're doing. All right, John, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, best of luck. Keep up the good work. Well, Jim Knox, Kansas fumbled the ball, but they were able to fall back on it, but not before a penalty was called against Missouri with 429 left. 15 sevens our score, first and five now for the Jayhawks. Can you imagine if Missouri would have recovered that fumble and it would have been offside? What a heartbreaker that would have been. Now, here's a key stat. Now, the uh, rushing average, Missouri coaches wanted to keep Kansas's rushing average about 3.8. It's 4.3. Close, but not exactly what they want. Goddard hands it off. Winbush. Drives that left side. Oh, he breaks free! Does he have the speed? Run right out of bounds at the 44-43 yard line. David Winbush led the entire state of Texas in rushing in high school last year. Over 2,600 yards, 22 touchdowns. You know, and what's good about him in this offense, he's a speedy guy. You know, Van's more of a pounder. But now they come in, they give the football to the jitterbug, and when Missouri's defense is a little bit tired, he's got fresh legs, and he just hits the seam and gets up the field. Ford, Kevin Ford comes across there, outstanding middle linebacker, but he just gets blocked right out of the play by one of the offensive linemen, University of Kansas. Well, Chris Enneking came up with a great block. This time, Winbush is stacked up, maybe have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And you can see what Winbush has done this season and last year. You know, he's a guy that the Missouri coaches said, have you noticed that Terry Allen's playing him more and more? Van, they weren't sure Van could beat him, but they said, this young man shows you the hip, takes it away, boom, he's gone. And they were more nervous about him than Van. And we asked one of the coaches at Kansas, how'd you guys recruit him? And he said, he's a three-clip guy. I said, what is that? He said, all you have to do is watch three clips of him on the movie and say, <laughs> give him a scholarship. And at 5'7", he's also a tough little cookie. Not highly recruited because of his 5'7 size. Second and four, closing in on three minutes to play in the ball game. The freshman again, the right side, and he takes a wallop. Calderon off Easter coming up from that strong safety spot. Welcome to college football, David. 
And Larry Smith is trying to call a timeout on the sideline, and he does. And he's able to get it off. So Missouri's going to burn a timeout with 2.59 to play in the ball game, but they still trail by eight. Full to run in Missouri. So far, they have had 154 yards for Missouri. That's a win right there for Kansas. Kansas has made big plays. An interception, a punt block, a fumble recovery. They have forced Jones to throw the ball, and he can't beat him throwing it. So they've accomplished all their goals today. On third and 12, they're going to keep it on the ground. Not the much running room. <laughs> Maybe up to the 43-yard line. Mitch Bowles on the carry. His first carry of the afternoon. The sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Had a 47-yard run against University of Alabama, Birmingham. And Larry Smith will have two minutes and 50 seconds on the clock after they receive the punt. You can see Missouri's upcoming schedule. Larry Smith has said from the beginning, our first four games are so important. Well, the first three were considered winnable. Then he has Ohio State. Then the schedule doesn't get much easier. Right, what he really wanted to do was be four and one after he played Iowa State. Now, obviously, if he loses today, that's not gonna happen because you gotta say he's gonna go in and be the underdog against Ohio State. And this year, 1997 is a big year in Missouri football because, as he phrased it, it's the turn-the-corner year. It's year four of the Larry Smith program, and he's done a great job, and he's going to continue to do a great job. But he wants to go to a bowl game at the end of this year. Well, they haven't had a winning season since 1983 when Warren Powers was the coach. That was asked also their last bowl appearance. They were in the Holiday Bowl where they lost to BYU. But he really felt bowl possibility was a realistic goal this year. And everybody that knew this team knew it also. Dean Royal set the kick it away. His last punt was 82 yards. Angling it to the left side. On the run. It's a returnable ball. Potter is hit and dropped at about the 37, his own 37. It was 2.39 to play in the ball game. Missouri was first and ten. You know what happened on that punt? He didn't get much hang time. The ball was kicked like a line drive, which enabled Potter to catch the ball on the run and then get up the field. In fact, Ron, that time, I timed Royal on the snap and the punt, like we talked about at halftime with him, and it was 2.1, which is outstanding for a college snapper and punter. Well, he only had 37 yards on that kick. Bobby Jones may have to put it up in the air, but he's only one for his last nine throw of the football. Quick backfield, he's going to go upstairs. Across the middle, the pass is going to be complete. It wasn't pretty, but it counts. Corey Coleman on the reception, their most dependable receiver. He played last week against Eastern Michigan, played the last part of the game with a concussion. Nobody even knew it. He had three drops in the game, and Larry Smith really worked very hard this week on his receivers catching passes. It was good enough for a first down. 2.25 to play. Jones to Olivo. Upended as he gets into Kansas territory. And Missouri, no huddle losses. Quickly moving things up. They only have one time outlet. And you know, this is not Missouri's personality. That's why it looks a little chaotic here. This is not what they do. They are a running football team where they run play action tight passes. When they get into these situations, they're in a negative environment for them. Now, right here, there's a lot of confusion. Murkison to the left, Coleman to the right. High formation with Olivo in the backfield. Olivo swings out to help block. Jones lets it fly. It's tipped incomplete. Patrick Brown again coming in from that linebacker spot to get a hand on it. He's not very physical as linebacker, but boy, he is quick. You know what happens here on the rollout pass? It looks like he has a receiver open downfield, but he waits to throw the ball. Look at this. He's wide open. Throw the ball to him right now because the longer he holds the ball, the more time the defenders have to come off the block, and that's exactly what happened. And I'll tell you, Patrick Brown is really rising to the occasion. Patrick Brown and Dewey Houston the third as Missouri faces third and seven. 144 to play. From the shotgun. Olivo goes to the left. Jones puts out a rush. He's in trouble. Scrambles away, and he's going to get 
the first down. Oh, have mercy. What an effort by that young man. That is true athleticism right there. He's got a rush coming up the field. He goes left, he goes right, he goes north, he goes south, and he just gets away from some of And you can't coach this. You cannot coach this type of elusiveness in a quarterback. You can work on it in practice, but you just can't coach moves like that. That is in his gene. Boy, Ron Warner had the first shot at him. Dewey Houston had the second shot at him, and they couldn't bring the very slippery and agile Corby Jones down. First and 10. Ball out of 41, 136 to play. Jones gets hit as he lets it go. You know, Ron, again, that was a trick play, a throwback across the field. But this football team is a good, solid football team, but they're not a catch-up team, and they have a hard time throwing the football when they have to throw the football. I think Ron Warner, number 99, the linebacker, and Kobe Jones are going to be great friends when this is over because Warner, again, right in his face. You know, and the coaches put their assignments this week. Warner lines up on the tight end, and Patrick Brown always lines up on the split end side. Something they haven't done all year. Second and 10, 131 to play. And Missouri jump. It was the left side of the line. I think it was Chris Meredith, the junior out of St. Joseph, Missouri. Number 64. Ball start. Ball start. On the board. Watch Meredith right here. He's going to move, but Patrick Brown on the outside starts to come across and almost forces him into move. Good guy by Patrick, but Meredith has got to keep his poise and stay on the line of scrimmage and not move. The defense can move, the offensive line cannot. Second and 15. From the shotgun. Kansas hit penetration. Jones flushed out of the pocket. He's going to keep it, and he runs out of bounds inside the 40. Jason Thorne had the beat on him. It was what to take his head off. Ron Warner again putting pressure on Jones. Good job by Jones, though, of getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. Because as you said, Ron, Missouri's only got one timeout left. And, you know, I've said this all year, and I said it last year. Football is like basketball now when it comes to two minutes left in the half and two minutes left in the game. There's so much strategy that goes into it, and players have got to be aware of the clock. Third down and eight. 122 to play. Jones being pressured. Oh, they almost had him. It was Warner again. Jones flips away once. Doesn't get away the second time. And look who it is. Ron Warner giving 110%. They call him the big play guy. And Missouri's going to burn their final timeout as they say fourth down and five. Fourth down. This is the kind of guy, Artie Jigantino, you want on your defense. The guy that gets lost in the play, comes right back and makes it. I want you to watch this guy's effort. Watch. He misses the sack, but instead of saying, oh, I feel sorry for myself, he gets up, takes it down, reaches out, and just makes a big-time play in an unbelievable situation. Earlier, on the trick play, he comes across the line of scrimmage, gets knocked down, gets back up, and then just sticks Jones as he throws the ball. And that has something to do with the poor pass that Jones threw. That guy is an effort guy. That's the kind of guy I had playing for me when I coached the Southern Cal and at the ramp. I love guys like that. He knows he only has 65 seconds left in this game. That's when you dig down deep. Warner is their big play guy. He plays on instincts. He's added 30 pounds since last year. And he and Patrick Brown have done Yeoman's work from that linebacker spot. Fourth and five, 105 to play. Missouri's going to go for it. What would you call here, Ron? I try, I try the option. I think you got to go on the legs of Corby Jones. Well, they're not in the formation to run the option right now. He's got some time. Let's just fly. The pass is complete. First down, down to the 23-yard line. Eddie Brooks, the tight end on a Blue Springs, Missouri. Thorne and Brown on the tackle. Inside of a minute. 
Well, they threw it, and they got it when they had to on that one. Brooks is an undersized tight end. He's more like a wide receiver. And Missouri, two for two on fourth down conversions, and Jones just going to put it down on the ground and get some time to talk about it. 15 to 7, Missouri trails by eight. 54 seconds left. Just a reminder, next week we'll be making our way to the Bryan College Station area down at Texas A&M. A rematch of last year's major upset when Southwest Louisiana beat Texas A&M. They tore the goalposts down like they did in Columbia, Missouri last year when these two teams played. And Artie and I and our crew will be there for that ball game. We hope you join us at 11.30 Central Time. Second and ten. The down and distance is moot at this point. Jones. Into the flat, the pass is caught. No, they're saying he's stepped out of bounds, incomplete. Murkison thought he got it. He got the foot down. Now they're saying it is complete. I thought he got a foot down. I did too. It looked like he, one of the officials overrode the official who made the call. We will see here because oh, we have oh, three players. He goes up, he catches it, he's down. Oh, yeah. That's a good job by the officiating crew. Corby knew it was good. And now Kansas is going to burn a timeout. They'll have two remaining. Missouri is out of timeout. After the timeout, it'll be first and 10 on the 10. I think this is a good decision by the Kansas defensive coaches here. Get your breath. Make sure everyone knows exactly what the defense is because you can't afford a mistake here because if Missouri scores, obviously they're going to go for two to try to get right. this baby into overtime. Well, the ball is just about on the 10, so they will not be able to get a first down. It will be first and goal and second with Jim Knott. Okay, Ron, if Kansas does hold on to win this game, this will be career victory 500 in football at the University of Kansas. Now, guys, listen closely here. Career victory 400 came against, do you guys know about this? Missouri. Exactly right. You win the prize, Ron. <laughs> and this will be Terry Allen's third victory at Kansas. And they're all important for that young man. Only 40 years old as the head coach here. Now the first time since 1891, both teams came in undefeated and untied, the earliest they have ever played, and it's been everything we had expected it to be. 11th play of the drive, first and goal, 49 seconds left. Missouri trailing. Here comes Kansas, the ball is loose to the Jayhawks, I think may have it. And it is Ron Warner again, right in the middle of things. And they've got it. was from Ron Warner. It was recovered by Brett McGraw. Number 99, no question about it. He's my player in the game. I don't know about you. Oh, it's obvious, but that was a blitz that time by the Kansas defense. And again, they came out of character. They're a non-blitzing team, but they blitzed in a key situation here. And you're going to see Warner just come off the corner, and he runs right by the offensive tackle. But what he does, Ron, he does a wonderful job of hitting him up high, hitting Jones up high, and ripping the football. And look at Coach Allen's reaction. Boy, is he happy. And he ought to be. Well, Brock Oliva from Missouri said last year's win over Kansas was the highlight of his career. Matt Johner and the rest of the Kansas Jayhawks said that was humiliating the way we lost. We were embarrassed, and they rubbed it in, and they remembered it. And they have played some decent football today, stopping a very powerful Missouri team. And that's twice now Missouri has been driving to put the game away or to score a touchdown, and they've tossed up the ball. And then once again, if you're a possession type of offense that wants to run the football, you cannot afford, because you can't play good catch-up, you can't afford to turn it over. This will be the ball game. Jonner takes the knee, and that's going to do it. The 500th victory for the University of Kansas. They go to 3-0 on the air. Missouri goes to 1-1. One and, one. and Terry Allen in his young career here at Kansas gets by far his biggest victory. Big, big win. And I'll tell you, this man 
has really, really showed you how to play defensive football today, Ron Warner. And his coach created a great atmosphere this week because Kansas went into this game and let it all fly, as they say. Well, they've now lost Missouri four straight here at Kansas. They haven't won here in Lawrence since 1990, and a very happy Terry Allen's with Jim Knox right now. Probably one of the happiest men on the field right here, Coach Terry Allen. What a way. You haven't been experienced this Florida war. you experienced today. What a way to finish it, huh? Yeah. Really exciting. Our kids played awful hard. Defense did a great job, but, but the offense did what they had to do today. Just awfully proud of our football team, and it's getting ridiculous. I talked to you yesterday, you said big plays is going to be a key to this game. Big plays, you guys got the job done with that. We department. made it happen. We didn't turn the ball over offensively. We got plays and a win. Talk about getting out the Missouri attack this. Well, I think we're for real defensively. You know, we've done a good job in the first two games, but we played against a quality quarterback with real good running backs, but we stuck in there, we did our assignments, and uh, kept them out of the end zone. You realize you can go to Fort O next week against Cincinnati? That sounds good to me, Jim. Thank you. Best of luck, Coach. Rod, 52 and 0 and leading at halftime is Terry Allen as a head coach. That is very impressive. He led at halftime this afternoon, 9-7, and he goes on to beat Missouri 15-7. We'll be back with more from Lawrence, Kansas, right after this. Stay with us. Okay. 